Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Marvel. Married the Black Widow at the Beginning. Chapter 81. Fury said, You are the only one in the entire Western Hemisphere who has a super prison. If you don't accept him, do you want King Apocalypse to tie him to his waist? Otherwise, why don't you explain to King Apocalypse? General Ross is so angry, are you using King Apocalypse to suppress me? Okay, hold it down. Then you can't know this or that. Without level, skill, or degree of harm, how can I achieve targeted detention? Superhumans have too many incredible skills. If they are not imprisoned in a targeted manner, they may escape, or even be killed. For example, to imprison the Hulk, all one needs to do is find a cell that is strong enough, although it has not yet been found. Some mind control criminals need to be locked in a cell that blocks their mental power. Those who enter must wear a mind suppressing helmet to prevent their mental power from being exerted. Fury said in his heart, I hope he has some superpowers so that he can explain to the public. If he was not an ordinary person, I would not send it to you. But when the words came to his lips, they became, Don't worry, it's okay, just find a place and close it. The perfunctory tone of his voice made General Ross's veins jump, and he said angrily, Why the hell are you asking me to imprison you casually? This is a super villain captured by King Apocalypse himself. Are you responsible for anything that happens? Okay, nothing will happen, don't worry. Okay, okay, I'm busy, so that's it. General Ross looked at the hung-up phone blankly, feeling angry in his heart. How did Fury become the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. when he was so irresponsible? How to protect the Earth? I can't be perfunctory like him. So General Ross activated the highest level cell in the super prison and locked the smuggler in it. The snakehead committed evil all his life, thinking that he might not die a good death, and thought about 10,000 possible ways to die, but he never thought that he would end up with such a fate worse than death. Not only was he wearing the most perverted torture device, making it difficult to move, he was also locked up in the most heavily guarded prison, and his eyes were blindfolded when he entered the cell. Except for eating, he never unsealed his mouth, forcing himself to cover up the bad breath in his mouth. Even if you fart normally, someone will come over with a gas mask to check in case it is a poisonous gas type super attack. Apocalypse, after following up on the hostage rescue situation, stopped paying too much attention and continued to search other dens. Naturally, professional people would do it. Now every day I'm either spending time with the Black Widow or studying the Rubik's Cube. Isn't that pure? As the impact of the wormhole war spreads, people not only know that there are threats from alien races in space, but also know that superheroes are so awesome. What's more, it's as if becoming a superhero isn't hard enough. For example, if you own an Iron Man suit, any ordinary person can immediately become the second Iron Man, or the next war machine. As a result, the rich and talented began to tinker with all kinds of strange equipment. There are also people who want to seek mutation like the original Blonsky, and it would be nice to become the Hulk. As for Captain America, his super serum has been passed down for more than 70 years, and many top companies have been quietly researching it for a long time. Unfortunately, there are some effects, but they can never be perfectly replicated. More people try, and there are always some results. However, the character of Westerners has never been related to duty. If they have some ability, they have to do something earth shattering. For a time, there were a lot more super crime cases in various places. Although most of these super criminals are half a bucket of water, far inferior to even the Black Widow, they are superior to most ordinary military police and are difficult to guard against. As a result, as one of the few superheroes that Fury had at his disposal, Black Widow began to appear frequently. The advantage of being with a woman like Black Widow is that she is not clingy, and the disadvantage is that she is not clingy. Just after the tenderness was over, the mission came. I just said, I'm going out to work, and set off. This made Apocalypse feel like he was being used, which made Fury's teeth itch with hatred. This morning, Black Widow received the mission, but instead of leaving directly, she came to the bedside and kissed Apocalypse gently to wake her up. Tang, Let's see if this mission is related to you. Apocalypse took the tablet and looked at it. The suspect on it was a rough man named House. His main crime was selling super protective gear and creating a large number of super criminals. 
Although these super criminals are ordinary people themselves, with the help of super protective gear, their destructive power is far beyond that of ordinary people. You know, in the United States, there are so many people who dare to rob supermarkets and convenience stores if they have a broken gun in their hands. Now that they have super protective gear in their hands, their ambitions are simply inflated. For a time, a large number of cases involving people wearing similar super protective gear appeared. After an investigation, S.H.I.E.L.D. quickly found House's head. Black Widow drew out a photo and said, Is this the mark of Asgard? I've seen it in Jane's information. This guy named House has such a mark on every set of protective gear he sells. After Apocalypse was made a prince, he learned some knowledge about Asgard. He still recognized such an obvious mark. It was indeed the mark of Asgard. These marks can be seen everywhere in Asgardian items and are a symbolic pattern of the kingdom of God. So it seems that the criminal is an Asgardian. If he doesn't call Heimdall back to the kingdom of God, why is he staying on earth? If they were really Asgardians, given their physical fitness, Black Widow might still be in some danger. Thinking of this, Apocalypse nodded and said, It is indeed the mark of Asgard. I will go with you to see it. After all, in the name of the prince, if the people of Asgard do bad things, they will always be punished. I need to help supervise it. Black Widow was so happy that she didn't wear the black tight-fitting combat suit. Instead, she wore a set of casual clothes. She held Apocalypse's hand and went out, as if she was going on vacation. If Tianchi takes action, all he has to do is drink milk tea and wait for the criminals to come to his door. With S.H.I.E.L.D.'s intelligence network, House's location was quickly located. House is not tall, tall and thick, has a thick curly beard on his face, and wears suspender jeans. At first glance, he looks like a simple working man. At this time, he was feasting on fried chicken in the Golden Arches. When he saw Black Widow and Apocalypse coming in, sipping milk tea, he looked stunned, then let out a strange cry of, ah, threw away the fried chicken in his hand, turned around and ran away. It crashed directly through the glass door of the Golden Arch, screamed like a frightened rabbit, and disappeared in front of Tianchi and the two people. Black Widow asked, did he recognize you? Tianchi shook his head, I have no impression of him anyway, but I don't rule out that he knows me. Everyone in Asgard recognizes Apocalypse, the new prince, but it is impossible for Apocalypse to know every Asgardian. Ignore it for now, we'll find out once we catch him and ask him. At such a close distance, Apocalypse sensed his bloodline aura, and was certain that this house was an Asgardian. Apocalypse hugged Black Widow's waist, taking ten meters at a time, and chased after House slowly. When House saw this, he felt like he was dead. He took out a tattered hammer from his waist and smashed something in front of him. He went in a straight line, smashing cars and walls, but nothing could stop him. Seeing this, Apocalypse couldn't continue playing like this, otherwise he didn't know if House would hurt ordinary people. He let go of Black Widow's hand, and in a flash, she stopped in front of House in a remote back alley. He gently put his hand on House's shoulder, and House suddenly froze on the spot, as if there was a huge weight on his shoulders, making him unable to move. House swung the hammer in his hand and hit Apocalypse on the chest. Apocalypse pinched it gently with his other hand and grabbed the hammer. The hammer has an ordinary appearance, not as dazzling as Thor's hammer, and it doesn't look special among a bunch of ordinary tools. It may not seem big, but it weighs over a hundred kilograms. It is impossible for earthlings to swing such a heavy hammer. There are still some magical properties left on it, so no wonder it was so fun to hit all the way. When House saw that his special weapon was useless, he immediately knew that he had met a strong person. Brother, if you have something to say, do you want money or protective gear? As long as you let me go, it's easy to talk. Tianchi smiled and said, I don't want anything. Someone will interrogate you later. House's face quickly turned pale and he shouted, Brother, you can beat me or kill me, but never hand me over to the Black Widow. Please. Just as he finished speaking, he turned around and saw that Black Widow had followed him, and suddenly screamed, Ah, strangely. Brother, if you don't let me go, kill me. I don't want to fall into the hands of the Black Widow. As he said that, he bumped his head against Tianchi. At the same time, a faint light of divine power appeared on his body, as if he had gathered all his strength. But Tianchi doesn't allow it, how could he move? 
Apocalypse shook his hand slightly, and the light of divine power on House was immediately scattered and could no longer be condensed. House begged with runny nose and tears, Brother, please, you can beat or kill me, but don't let me fall into the hands of the Black Widow. I'm afraid. Tianchi frowned when he heard this. How could this guy look like a girl despite his huge size? Is Black Widow that scary? Just as he said that, Black Widow had already followed. House was trembling all over. He originally cried in front of Apocalypse, but when Black Widow came, he didn't even dare to cry anymore. What's going on? Don, you beat him to tears. Black Widow asked. No, it looks like he was scared to tears by you. How could it be? I am so gentle. With that said, he turned his back to Apocalypse and winked at House, suggesting that you say something nice to me and don't let me embarrass myself in front of my man. But how could a rough guy like House understand such a delicate hint? Instead, he shouted, You lied. You caught many criminals, but you didn't interrogate or kill them. You tortured them until they were worse than death, and they couldn't even surrender even if they wanted to. A cold light flashed in Black Widow's eyes, which made House shrink even more in fear, and said weakly, What do you want to do? Is there any more? Black Widow asked through gritted teeth. They also, also said that you are immortal and that you like to cut off men's penises when they are happiest. Black Widow said angrily, Where did you hear this rumor from? Immortality naturally refers to the recovery potion. What the hell is that at the end? I have never done anything so disgusting. I don't know which guy it was that passed the dirty jokes between men as information. Just, just what my brother on the road said. Which brother? What's his name? Where is he? A cold light flashed in Black Widow's eyes, and she had already sentenced this, brother on the road, to death. House said, you can't say that. Those who come out to fool around still have to show some loyalty. Since you don't say it, there's no need to say it. Black Widow took out a roll of black tape and was about to seal House's mouth. House saw that he was going to follow in the footsteps of his brothers on the trail. With this black tape, he couldn't surrender even if he wanted to. He shouted hurriedly, I say, I say, there is a bar called Night Dance in the west of the city. The owner is called Chad, who specializes in selling information. There is also an underground casino on 29th Street, where you can also buy your information. Tianchi smiled and said, Natasha, I didn't expect your name to be so intimidating. I was worried all day long that you were not safe outside. There is an old saying in the East, there is only the wrong name, but there is no wrong nickname. Black Widow is already very powerful, but because of her beauty and previous behavior, people have the illusion that men who fall into the hands of Black Widow are not capable enough. The stronger the criminal, the more serious his machismo. If others can't conquer this poisonous beauty, it doesn't mean that you can't. As long as he takes the stage, he can definitely instigate her rebellion, and then there will be a double harvest of beauty and pornographic information. The result is obviously that people who have this kind of fantasy will not end up well in the end. Later, when she encountered Apocalypse, Black Widow could no longer use her beauty skills, so the only way left was to torture her. In addition, during the two years that Apocalypse stayed in Asgard, Black Widow turned her worries into strength and was particularly ruthless. Anyway, the criminals who can dispatch the Black Widow are not little shrimps themselves. They are full of crimes. Even if they are killed, S.H.I.E.L.D. will not say a word. Slowly, Black Widow also discovered that it was more efficient to go straight in this way. Before, it was too slow to pretend to be weak and use beauty. As a result, the style became more vigorous and resolute. When many criminals were being tortured, they tried to struggle and refused to answer when asked for the first time. As a result, they never had the chance to answer again. It's not like there weren't criminals who wanted to resist and designed traps and ambush, causing some harm to the Black Widow. If it were other agents, even if they didn't die, they would have to recuperate for at least a few months, and they wouldn't dare act too arrogantly in the future. As a result, as soon as the Black Widow drank the recovery potion, she was resurrected with full health in the blink of an eye, and the criminals could not escape even if they wanted to. In the end, he will only enjoy more severe torture. Therefore, with the spread of the underground intelligence network, the Black Widow became particularly terrifying. Underground intelligence is inherently true and false, and cannot be as rigorous as national agencies. It's a bit like gossip news. 
Don't exaggerate or fabricate it to show that you have exclusive inside information and others won't buy your information. As a result, the notoriety of the Black Widow spread underground. Apocalypse always sides with Black Widow whether it is now or in his past life memories, so he naturally doesn't feel that there is anything scary about her. Only by standing on the opposite side of her can one feel the horror of this stunner. Hearing Tianchi's question, Black Widow was afraid that Tianchi would know how she acted when handling the case, and her tone instantly switched to a little girl mode, saying, Tang, it's not what you think, some criminals just accept the tough but not the soft. Just reason with them. It's useless, so I hit harder. House was stunned. Is this the legendary Black Widow? At this moment, she was holding a cup of milk tea and dressed in casual clothes. She was afraid that the men around her would misunderstand her, so she explained softly, just like a little woman. He just barely shook the man's arm and called, Brother. This face-changing technique is really terrifying. If I hadn't recognized your face, I would have been fooled by you. At the same time, I feel one contempt, and you didn't give us a soft choice. Tianchi smiled and said, I would like to see what your hard methods are like. When House heard this, his heart skipped a beat. Sure enough, they were in the same group, maybe a male version of Black Widow. He quickly said, I said, I will say anything, please don't block my mouth. Why do you put this mark on your equipment? Speaking of this, House showed a proud expression on his face and said, This is a symbol of a great kingdom of God. You people on earth don't understand. Really, Tianchi said lightly, with his divine power running around his body, a dark golden mark appeared on his chest, so, do you recognize this mark? Prince's seal, this, 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 this is impossible. I have never heard of any prince in Asgard. Are you saying that my royal seal is fake? House struggled internally. Although he had never heard of any prince in Asgard, the powerful man in front of him could turn himself into a pulp with just one slap. It seemed that there was no need to get a fake power seal to deceive him. Moreover, fake power seals are not easy to obtain. Except for Asgardians, outsiders may have never seen them, and counterfeiting is out of the question. Thinking of this, House knelt down on one knee and performed an Asgardian etiquette. How long have you been on Earth? Tianchi said. House originally wanted to lie, but when he saw Apocalypse's majestic eyes, his heart was shaken and he immediately became honest. 1,000 more than 200 years. How did it come about? At that time, the Kingdom of God had a batch of equipment that needed some metal from the earth, so it sent a team to mine in Northern Europe. I am a blacksmith and came here at that time. Humph, it seems that you have lived quite comfortably in these more than 1,000 years. House said. I don't dare, Prince. I am just a small blacksmith in Asgard, and my talent in cultivating divine power is not good, so I can only be a blacksmith for the rest of my life. I am a small person, and no one will find me if I am lost, otherwise Heimdar wanted to find me, but how could he not find me? So you just do whatever you want on earth and dominate, right? Do you know how many people have been hurt by the divine protective gear you sold? Prince, I just made those protective gears randomly, and I didn't inject much divine power. I just wanted to make some money. After the wormhole war, there were suddenly more people who wanted to buy these protective gears, so I quote, Tianchi has seen those protective gears in the information, some of which are gloves, which can penetrate thick reinforced concrete with one blow. Some are armors. After wearing them, the whole body is protected by a divine shield. Before the divine power is exhausted, it is not afraid of any ordinary bullets. These protective gears are not very strong for superheroes, but for ordinary people, they are already very magical. This is still a defective product that was made casually. You can imagine how magical armor and the like that were made carefully would be to the people on Earth. HMPH, what do you mean by putting our Asgard mark on each set of protective gear? Aren't you afraid of losing Asgard's face? House murmured, a person is actually quite lonely here. The wife I found couldn't stay with him for long, and I never found him again. I hope some Asgardians see the mark on the protective gear, so that I won't be so lonely on Earth. In fact, there are far more Asgardians on the Earth than the blacksmith house. As for whether he has been discovered or not, it is hard to say. Even if he finds out, he may not want to pay attention to him. After all, 
he is just a low-level blacksmith, and the Asgardians who can freely enter and exit the Earth may not think highly of him. If the case hadn't been handed over to Black Widow this time, even if Apocalypse himself knew about it, he probably wouldn't bother to come find him. The blacksmith's crime was not punishable by death, but it was not okay to leave him outside and let him do whatever he wanted. Apocalypse pondered for a moment and asked, Natasha, does S.H.I.E.L.D. need someone like him? If necessary, let him go to S.H.I.E.L.D. If not, lock him up first. When I return to Asgard next time, I will take him away. I'll contact the director and ask. Black Widow reported the situation to Fury. When Fury heard about it, he realized that he could use super protective gear. Naturally, the more the merrier. Moreover, with Tianchi personally suppressing him, Liang Hao's didn't dare to mess around. House asked cautiously. Prince, from now on Black Widow and I will be colleagues, right? Can I use her name with my brothers on the street? Black Widow said fiercely. What? Do you want to say bad things about me again? I don't dare. Under the banner of Black Widow, it will be easier to get around on the road in the future, and I won't be afraid that someone won't pay me. Black Widow smiled and said. You are really blind, do you know who he is? He is our prince of Asgard, but apart from Odin and Thor, he is not famous on earth. Besides, others don't believe me when I say that he is related to a god. Giggle, giggle, he's not famous. Where does all the information on your road come from? What reputation does the prince have on earth? How can I? Suddenly, House came to his senses. Previously leaked news said that the god-level man under the beam of light came from Asgard. Could it be that? King Apocalypse, so you are King Apocalypse. House's eyes suddenly widened, and he was a little scared. He actually dared to swing the hammer at him just now. If he hadn't been an Asgardian, he might have died countless times. Now that the matter is settled and it's still early, Apocalypse and Black Widow simply go shopping. Along the way, House worked as a moving boy for the Black Widow. Looking at him working hard and without complaint, he didn't seem to be uncomfortable at all. After all, he was just a blacksmith at the lowest level in Asgard, and now that he could work as an errand boy for the prince, he seemed to have been promoted. Apocalypse hadn't played with Black Widow for long when a message interrupted their shopping fun. Happy was injured and hospitalized. Apocalypse was a little surprised when he received this news. Although he did not directly give Happy the recovery potion, Iron Man did. After all, there is a layer of separation between me and Happy, and Happy is not a superhero, so I don't need his luck. Some favors would be better from the hands of Iron Man. After all, no matter how good their relationship is, they are still bosses and employees in name only. As a result, Apocalypse and Black Widow had to separate. Black Widow took House back to S.H.I.E.L.D., while Apocalypse went directly to the hospital to visit Happy. Apocalypse comes to see Happy. Not only are they half-friends, but they are also related to the plot of Iron Man 3. As soon as he entered the ward, he found that Iron Man and Pepper were already guarding the room. Seeing the arrival of Apocalypse, Happy was a little flattered and wanted to struggle to get up. I didn't know where I got the courage to challenge him in the ring. No wonder he said he wanted to find a weak person to practice with, fearing that he would just beat the person to death. It turned out to be true. Tian Chi pressed her hand softly, signaling him not to move, and asked, why don't you drink the recovery potion? Happy said, it's nothing serious. I'll just lie down for a month and I'll be fine. We can't waste such precious medicine. Restoration potions are not uncommon for Apocalypse, but the relationship between Happy and Apocalypse is, after all, separated by a layer, and they cannot be like Iron Man and Black Widow, who can ask for anything at will. Apocalypse is not a good person either. No one will cherish things that are too easy to obtain. Anyway, Happy is not fatally injured. How did you get injured? I saw two suspicious people outside the mall. I wanted to follow them to see what was going on, but I was discovered by a person. Later, Happy was a little confused, I don't know if I was dumbfounded by the explosion. In my memory, I saw one person exploded, another person's leg was broken, and then it grew back, and then ran away. Human bomb, Apocalypse thought for a moment and realized that this was indeed the plot of Iron Man 3. This is a human medicine developed by a scientist named Aldrich Killian. It can repair defects in the human body, regenerate broken limbs, and also has high temperature superpowers. 
the body can emit temperatures of several thousand degrees and can melt most metals. The materials used in Iron Man's suit are definitely not bad, but they still can't stand in the face of this high temperature. Its disadvantage is that it is extremely unstable. A person injected with this drug may turn into an oversized suicide bomb anytime and anywhere. Killian naturally knew this problem, and in order to make a profit, he recruited a group of remnant soldiers who had been abandoned by the government. These disabled soldiers were physically disabled on the battlefield, did not receive due pensions, and were full of hatred for the U.S. government. Now that Killian's potion can restore limbs, I am naturally grateful. I can let them do some suicide attacks without additional brainwashing. Iron Man said, Shield has been asking me for help recently. There is a terrorist leader who calls himself the Mandarin and claims to be responsible for many bombings. Their suicide bombings were extremely destructive, but there were no traces of explosives. They wanted me to analyze whether there were new ingredients. If it was a suicide bomb, then the person who carried the bomb should have residual limbs left behind. Apocalypse shook his head and said, Tony, open your eyes a bit. The human bomb I am talking about is not a human carrying a bomb, but, the human body is a bomb. Iron Man was startled and stood up, how is this possible? If this is the case, then the explosion scene can be explained. Has the Mandarin already mastered such high technology? The prototype of the Mandarin is an eastern evil villain created by Americans in the early days. He has a sharp mouth, hanging eyes, a thin beard, and wears the official uniform of the Qing dynasty. Just one look at him can give people nightmares. In the United States, it can be said that the Mandarins are known to everyone. But the Mandarin mentioned by Iron Man is a Westerner, and not the real leader. This so-called, Mandarin, was just a puppet arranged by Killian. He used beautiful women and drugs to control him, and then asked him to shoot some threatening videos to make the world think that he was behind all this. The first thing I want to do is to use the name, Mandarin, to create a sensation, and secondly to divert the attention of S.H.I.E.L.D. and other departments. This, Mandarin, actor is a fool. After becoming this puppet, he was always attended by beautiful women when he came in and out. Apart from being under house arrest, he lived a very happy life. What's even more amazing is that for such a big thing, not only did he not die, he didn't even spend a few days in jail. In the later, Shang-Chi, he also appeared and became good friends with an eastern mythical beast, Di Zhang. Thinking of this, Apocalypse asked Pepper, has Killian been looking for you? Little Pepper asked strangely, you also know this. He did come to see me. I was afraid that Tony would misunderstand, so I haven't told Tony yet. He showed me a neural network technology. However, I feel that this technology is too weaponized. Now that Tony won't let the company develop weapons, I will send him away. Ha 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 ha, Tianchi laughed, do you know that he is the leader behind all this? The Mandarin is just a puppet he introduced to divert attention. Iron Man, Pepper Potts, and Happy looked in disbelief. Iron Man asked, how is this possible? Why is he doing all this? What good does this do to him? Apocalypse glanced at Iron Man and said, aside from wanting to plunder more money, the most important thing for him is revenge. This Killian was a lame and down and out scientist more than 10 years ago. At a cocktail party, he finally had a chance to talk to Iron Man in the elevator. But at that time, Iron Man was flirting with a beautiful doctor and was about to go to the room to discuss science and technology in depth, so he naturally had no time to pay attention to him. So I lied to him and said, go to the rooftop and wait for me for five minutes. As a result, Iron Man and the beautiful doctor had a happy night, but Killian drank the northwest wind on the rooftop all night. From then on, he hated Iron Man. Seeing Apocalypse looking at him, Iron Man wondered, why are you looking at me? Is he seeking revenge from me? I don't know him. No, you know him. Tianchi said, it's just that you don't remember him. This matter started more than 10 years ago. Tony, do you remember a beautiful doctor named Maya Hansen? Ah, uh, I don't know. Iron Man quickly winked at Tianchi. This guy, I know you are very mysterious and know everything, but why are you bringing up these old things? Didn't you see that little pepper is around? Tianchi ignored it and continued. If Maya is scheming, you and her child may be 13 years old. Iron Man's face suddenly turned pale, and Pepper's expression began to turn evil. She stared at Iron Man, 
angry and aggrieved, with tears welling up in her eyes. You know, with Iron Man's net worth, it is really possible for a beautiful woman to secretly give birth to a child without telling him for a huge alimony. After all, it is really his own blood, and Iron Man cannot ignore it. Even if he wants to default on the debt, the laws of the United States will enforce it. Iron Man has been so romantic all his life that he can't even remember how many women he has had relationships with. It's not impossible if one or two fall for him. Looking at Iron Man's face, you can tell that he didn't take any protective measures at all back then, otherwise he would not be scared, but suspicious. Don't worry, I'm just saying if. Iron Man breathed a sigh of relief and said, Tang, you guy, don't scare people casually, okay. If you fart, hurry up. Do you still remember that when you were in the elevator with Dr. Maya, there was a lame man trying to sell you a technology? Hum, when you mention it like this, it seems that there is indeed such a person. What happened next that I forgot about him? I think I sent him to the rooftop. He's Killian, with Iron Man's IQ, when he mentioned this, everything immediately connected. The once down and out kid now wanted to show off and take revenge on those who had humiliated him before. Iron Man suddenly became uneasy when he thought that this man had also been to Stark Company and looked for Pepper Potts. Don, are you here to help eradicate them? No, Tianchi shook his head, happy as my friend, and I mainly came to see him. I believe that with your ability, you can easily handle these small things. By the way, that beautiful doctor named Maya is working for Killian now. If she comes to you, you must be careful. Also, the current vice president has colluded with Killian. In the plot of Iron Man 3, the opponent's strength is actually not very strong, but Killian's layout is good and there are too many ways to confuse him. As a result, Iron Man wasted a lot of time just tracking down the Mandarin. Later, Pepper was tricked into being a hostage by Dr. Maya, and she fell into a passive position. Now Apocalypse has revealed everything to him. With Iron Man's strength and connections, even with the support of the Vice President, he can easily destroy this criminal group. Before leaving, Tianchi took the pen and paper, wrote a line of words, folded it, and said to Iron Man, when you and Pepper come to the hospital, there are countless reporters waiting outside. When you go out later, what are you doing? If you have anything to say, I suggest you read this note first. Iron Man said, is this a clever trick from Eastern Legends? It's not a clever idea, just a little reminder. I'm leaving now, happy, have a good rest. Where are you going? Those Saul and Jane discovered something interesting in London, the kingdom of Big Fart. I want to go and see it myself. As soon as Apocalypse left, Happy finally couldn't suppress his mood and his heart began to beat wildly. Little Pepper was so frightened that she wanted to call the doctor, but Happy quickly stopped him and said, no need to call the doctor, I'm fine, I'm happy. King Apocalypse said I was his friend, ha 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 ha. I even had a fight with him. When we drink from now on, let's see who is better than me. Little Pepper put her hand on her forehead and was speechless. It was really hard for her to understand that if a man drinks, he drinks. Why should bragging be regarded as such an important thing? As if bragging and drinking are meaningless. Iron Man, who is also a man, can understand Happy's thoughts and said, it's awesome, but you have to have people believe it. In one sentence, Happy was thrown into troubles of happiness. If Iron Man said that he was a friend of King Apocalypse, no one would believe it. After all, they were comrades fighting side by side in the New York wormhole war. But, how can you be so virtuous? You can't even get close to me. If King Apocalypse can even look at you, I'll think I'm a loser. Happy thought to himself, otherwise, he might as well say that he had a fight with King Apocalypse. This seems to be slightly less credible, well, no one would believe it. Iron Man and Pepper Little finished their visit. As soon as they left the hospital entrance, they were blocked by reporters who had been waiting for them. Iron Man was originally angry and afraid of Happy being bombed. Even if he had the recovery potion given by Apocalypse, if he was killed on the spot like other innocent people, no matter how magical the potion was, it would be useless. Now I am annoyed by reporters. I just wanted to announce my address to the public and make a fight with my enemies like in the original plot. Suddenly I remembered the note Tianchi gave me. When I opened it, I saw it said, do not publish your address. Iron Man was shocked, how powerful is this guy Tang? 
What he just wanted to say was just an impulsive thing that came to his mind less than 10 seconds ago. How could he know it in advance? So, when the words came to his lips, they became, Mandarin, if you have the ability, come to me. My home address is, number, 880, lane 365, Malibu Highway. If you are a man, don't be timid. As expected, Killian sent a helicopter to attack on the second day. Who would have thought that this was originally an idle villa, and Iron Man didn't live here at all? As soon as Killian's armed aircraft flew over, it was killed by the remote-controlled unmanned suit ambushed here. Killian, who was so angry that he was hiding in the dark, flew into a rage. He had been fooled by him once more than ten years ago, and now he was fooled again. Therefore, he had to follow the original plot and send Dr. Maya to get close to Pepper. Unexpectedly, as soon as Maya appeared, she was detained by people from the relevant departments contacted by Iron Man. Then he sent a false message to Killian, saying that he had caught Little Pepper and got the address of his lair. In less than half a day, Killian's lair was surrounded by a sky full of remote-controlled suits and countless soldiers. Killian never expected that his carefully designed plan could be so fragile and be seen through by others. Apart from killing a few innocent people, not even a decent wave was produced. He even began to doubt his own IQ. Was he too stupid in terms of conspiracy? On Tianchi's side, he walked out of the hospital and jumped into the sky. The physical body flew across the Atlantic Ocean and soon arrived in London, the kingdom of Big Fart. This time, he came for the ether particles, the reality stones. It's just that these infinite gems are hard to get. When Apocalypse arrived, the abandoned building was already surrounded by police. There were several police cars nearby that overturned and fell to the ground, with glass fragments scattered all over the floor. The big-assed policeman hid behind the police cars and nervously pointed his gun at the open space in the middle. Thor was watching over Jane and had no time to pay attention to the police around him. As long as they don't shoot, Thor will not take the initiative to harm them. At this time, Jane was lying on the ground, her eyes closed tightly, and she had passed out. There is a faint dark red liquid flowing all over the body, which is another form of the reality gem, ether particles. Judging from this situation, it seems that Jane discovered the gravity anomaly in this abandoned building and came to detect it. Just like the original plot, she accidentally entered the space-time gap and obtained ether particles. After coming out, because Daisy saw that she had been missing for too long, she called the police, and the police came to check. As a result, the two people came into contact, causing the energy of the ether particles to rebound, not only overturning the car, but also knocking him out. Now, the etheric particles were flowing endlessly and seemed to be transforming her body. If she can become the female Thor in the future, I am afraid that the contribution of this etheric particle will be indispensable. However, Jane is a native of Earth after all, and the ether particles remain in her body. If she does not learn how to control them, her life will still be in danger over time. This is why Thor is worried. He could sense that Jane's vitality was slowly disappearing. Tianchi stepped forward, crossed the police, and said, You should leave, this is not something you can handle. Seeing that he was an Oriental, the policeman naturally could not listen to him. Just as he was about to stop him, he found that Tianchi simply walked forward, passing among more than a dozen people, and no one could touch him. Suddenly, they understood that a superhuman had arrived. Since the New York Wormhole War, Police around the world have become aware of the existence of superhuman beings, and as supercrimes increase around the world, ordinary police officers have realized that there is nothing they can do. The best way to deal with supercriminals is to report them to specialized departments, including SHIELD. What's more, these people in front of them are not considered criminals. At most, they are super powerful and out of control. Naturally, it is impossible for the police to look for trouble and take the initiative to shoot. Don, you're here. Well, how is Jane doing now? It's okay for the time being, but these strange things remain in her body, causing her to lose vitality. If it goes on for a long time, I'm afraid she won't be able to bear it. Tianchi checked the situation. Jane seems to be in some pain. As long as the contact force is slightly stronger, the ether particles will immediately react and push away the external force. At the same time, the force of the rebound will also hurt Jane. 
This is also the reason why Thor dares to forcibly extract ether particles. The ether particles are now entangled with Jane, and unless she has the control method of the Dark Elf King, she can't extract them unless she dies. Thor, I have a method that I can try, but I don't know if it will succeed. Tianchi said. As long as it ensures that Jane is not in danger, feel free to give it a try. Okay, I'll start. Apocalypse put his hand against Jane's dantian and slowly mobilized the power of the universe Rubik's Cube. A stream of light blue energy slowly seeped into Jane's body. Under the guidance of Tianchi's spiritual consciousness, the dark red ether particles were patiently entangled. The energy of the Infinity Stones has the same origin, and the ether particles do not seem to reject the energy of the cosmic cube. Slowly, Jane's body forms an intertwined color of dark red and light blue. Seeing that the entanglement was almost complete, Tianchi mobilized his consciousness and pumped blue energy, trying to pull out the ether particles. As soon as he moved, a huge counterattack energy suddenly burst out. With a muffled sound of, bang, with Jian as the center, two waves of dark red and light blue energy swept out in all directions. Suddenly, the police cars and policemen surrounding him were overturned to the ground. Fortunately, Jane had exploded before, so they had taken precautions and only caused minor injuries to a few people. The police officers retreated one after another, and then retreated another 20 meters, calling for support. But Jane's situation was dire. Two huge energies exploded in her body, and her internal organs were shattered. She vomited blood and her life hung on a thread. Tianchi hurriedly took out the recovery potion and poured a bottle into it before repairing the injury. At the moment when the ether particles and the energy of the cosmic cube exploded, there was a remote and desolate dark space in the vast universe. The energy light of a spaceship slowly turned on, and in the blink of an eye, the entire spacecraft turned from darkness to dark red. A pale-skinned dark elf opened his eyes. This person was the dark elf King Malekith. He seemed to be talking to himself or to others. Ha 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 ha, ether particles are waking us up, the celestial body convergence has begun again, and our era is coming. Immediately afterwards, the huge cabin inside the spacecraft and the dormant cabins of countless dark elves lit up with dark red light. Then, all the sleeping dark elves were waking up. Thor naturally doesn't know what happened in the dark place of the universe. He only cares about Jane now. Don, you can't try again. Apocalypse nodded. This time, it was just a slight attempt and almost killed Jane. Fortunately, there was a recovery potion. If the energy is increased, Jane may be shocked to death on the spot. In that case, no amount of recovery potion will help. After all, not even the purple recovery potion can bring the dead back to life. I'll take her back to Asgard to see what my father can do. Okay, this can only be the case for now. Tianchi knows that Asgard has no way to remove the ether particles, but according to the original plot, the appearance of the ether particles means that the Dark Elves have awakened. It won't take long for the Dark Elves to follow the energy of the ether particles, and a battle will be inevitable. The Earth's technology is too backward and there is no defense. Facing the Dark Elves, I am afraid there will be heavy casualties. It would be better to go to Asgard. After all, as the kingdom of God that once defeated the Dark Elves, it still has a lot of means. Thor was about to call Heimdall, and then a voice came, wait a minute. Apocalypse looked over and saw that it was Daisy. Take me with you, Tianchi frowned and said, what are you going to do? Seeing that Apocalypse seemed unhappy, Daisy spoke weakly and said, I. I can take care of Jane. Do you two grown men know how to take care of people? He said he was taking care of Jane, but in fact his eyes were on Tianchi the whole time, and even a blind man could see his affection. The God of Thunder said, that's fine. You are her friend and a human being from Earth. It is indeed easier to take care of her. Ahem, Apocalypse wanted to remind Thor. Asgard is so advanced, can't it even take care of an individual? Don't you know what Daisy means to me? Are you giving me this trouble? However, Thor didn't understand his hint at all. At this time, he was extremely anxious. As long as he could help his girlfriend a little bit, he could not wait to arrange everything. Tianchi had no choice but to signal Daisy to come over. Daisy suddenly smiled like a flower, walked over and hugged Apocalypse's strong arms, as if she had hugged him countless times before. As soon as Daisy hugged me, Apocalypse felt the warmth, softness, and elasticity, but he still couldn't help but ask, 
Ahem. Dot why are you hugging me? I'm afraid of falling out when the rainbow comes down. Well, that's indeed a good reason. In, Thor 3, Thor and Loki were knocked out of the rainbow energy channel by Hela, and finally fell to the planet Sokka. After all, Daisy is an ordinary person. If she is frightened and falls out, let alone falling into space, even if she falls from two or three floors, it may be fatal. Seeing that she seemed to have convinced Apocalypse, Daisy hugged her tighter. Tianchi sighed secretly, I don't know how to deal with this comfortable trouble. Thor hugged Jane and called Heimdall. Soon, a rainbow fell from the sky, and the four disappeared in the open space, leaving only an ancient rune. After arriving in Asgard, Daisy still held Apocalypse's arm, so Apocalypse had to remind, we're here. Seeing the Asgardians coming to greet her in the distance, Daisy reluctantly let go of her hand. Thor settled Jane down and asked Daisy to stay with her. Medical staff from the Kingdom of God came to check. Feeling relieved, he came to the temple and gathered with Apocalypse, God King Odin, God Queen Frigga and others. Seeing everyone gathered, Tianchi got straight to the point and said, King God, the ether particles have awakened the Dark Elves. I'm afraid it won't be long before they come to find Jane and take her away. Odin was a little surprised, thinking that Apocalypse called everyone here to discuss how to save Jane, but he didn't expect that they were discussing the Dark Elves. Prince Tang also knows about the Dark Elves. Know a thing or two. Thor asked in confusion. What does this have to do with the Dark Elves? The God King sighed slightly and said, this is a long story, and it goes back to your grandfather's generation. The ether particle was once a sacred object of the Dark Elves. Its body is the reality gem, which can turn people's ideas into reality. Dark Elves naturally like dark and cold places. The light of the universe is as uncomfortable as hell for them. At the beginning of the universe, many stars had not yet formed, and the universe was dark. At that time, it was the golden age of the Dark Elves. But with the emergence of the Celestial Clan, a large number of stars were created in the universe, allowing light to shine in this ancient universe. Speaking of the Celestials, not to mention distant gods like Xing Lord's father, Apocalypse remembered that there is one currently gestating under the Earth. Once born, the entire Earth will burst like a placenta and turn into wasteland, and all humans will die. However, Apocalypse still doesn't know how to solve this problem. I only hope that in the future, if we become stronger and unite with the Eternals, we can prevent this tragedy from happening. Odin saw Tianchi's expression was different and asked, Prince Tang also knows about the Celestial Clan. I know a thing or two. However, let's solve the problem at hand first, and think of a solution later. Immediately, a thought flashed across his mind. Did Asgard deliberately create the structure of the Flat Continent to prevent the Celestials from breeding inside the planet? However, this matter is not urgent. We will discuss it with Odin when we have the opportunity in the future. Just listen to Odin continue. The Dark Elves can only shrink under the light and live in the country of Waithheim. Thousands of years ago, the Dark Elf King Malekith obtained the Aether Particles from nowhere and wanted to use the energy of the Aether to extinguish the stars and return the universe to darkness. My father, Thor's grandfather, King Bauer, after learning about this, started the first war against the Dark Elves and prevented this catastrophe. Since then, there has been peace in the Nine Kingdoms for thousands of years. Wait, Thor interrupted, you didn't tell us how we won. Odin glanced at the God of Thunder and said slowly, King Bauer, kill them all. Thor's breath was suffocated, he was kind-hearted by nature, but he still couldn't bear it, even though thousands of years had passed. Why did Tang still say they would come after killing them all? All the Dark Elves who participated in that war were killed. However, the Dark Elf King Malekith is not dead, and there are still some descendants left in the dark places of the universe. Since Prince Tang said they would come, they will definitely come. Odin then said, This is just one of the troubles. At this point in time, it is when the Nine Kingdoms are wandering in the cosmic tree and connecting in a line. They meet once in 5,000 years. During this period, the boundaries between the Nine Kingdoms will be blurred and they can easily cross each other. If Malekith obtains ether particles, he can use this moment of celestial bodies to gather to enhance the ether energy and plunge the Nine Kingdoms into darkness, which may then affect the entire universe. Until now, Apocalypse has not been able to figure out what the world tree mentioned by Odin and Thor looks like, 
but judging from the original plot, the major event of connecting the Nine Kingdoms did happen. Is there really an invisible world tree? In the original plot, Asgard was unprepared and was invaded by the Dark Elves invisibly. It was caught off guard and even the energy core of the protective shield was destroyed. But now with the reminder from Apocalypse, it is naturally impossible to give the Dark Elves any chance to succeed. The three men were discussing the matter of guarding against the Dark Elves, while Queen Frigga on one side remained silent and kept silent. However, her hands rubbed the hem of her skirt from time to time, looking a little restless. Just when Apocalypse was about to persuade him not to worry about the Dark Elves, his mind changed and he suddenly understood. In the original plot, when the Dark Elves invaded, it was the day the God Queen Frigga died. The God Queen Frigga actually foresaw her own death a long time ago. Later, the fat Thor with a beer belly came back in time and tried to inform her of her fate so that she could avoid it. Frigga just responded calmly and declined fat thunder God's kindness. It's not that I don't want to change, it's not that I'm open to it, it's that I don't dare. Being able to peer into the long river of time, she has become aware of the existence of the sacred timeline and the unpredictable power that maintains it. Frigga did not dare to change without authorization for fear of bringing more terrible consequences to Asgard. Or, she may have tried to change it before, but the result was the miserable ending of the original plot. If she changes it again, Asgard may be completely destroyed. No matter what, Frigga accepted her fate anyway, even in the face of her own death. Now, because Frigga agreed to the apocalypse, she no longer peeps into the flow of time, and wonders whether she will develop according to her original destiny. In the face of life and death, no one can be completely indifferent. Tianchi thought for a while and said, Queen God, the results you saw in the long river of time may not become reality. You have been with Jane and the others these two days, and I will stay by your side. I will not go to the war outside. The Queen of Gods was overjoyed. With Apocalypse standing by her side, she was not just an extremely powerful man. Apocalypse is the key person to change the fate of Asgard. Now that he personally protects himself, he is very likely to change his fate and cross this life and death barrier. As for the battle outside, the original plot was just about being caught off guard, and the Dark Elves were actually not very strong. With the defensive power of Thor and Asgard, and the deployment of defenses in advance, it was enough to easily cope with it. After all, the race that was once wiped out is now just some remaining troops, what kind of trouble can it cause? In the original plot, if Loki and Thor hadn't set a trap for the Dark Elf King to take out the Aether Particles in order to save Jane, he might not even be able to touch the edge of the Aether Particles. Thunder God was deeply moved when he saw Tianchi caring so much about his family. He put his arm around Tianchi's shoulders and said, Brother, I leave my mother and girlfriend to you. It's a pity that you can't participate in such an exciting thing as fighting the invaders. You might not even be able to see a single enemy inside, and I'll wipe them all out. Odin said, Thor, my life is over. I'm afraid I won't be able to help in this battle. You have to have an overall view and don't just rush and kill like a warrior. Otherwise, how can you convince the people when you become the king in the future? The god of thunder was noncommittal. He didn't care whether he was convinced or not. Being able to fight was the most satisfying thing. In the next few days, Tianchi sat quietly outside Jane's room, letting go of his sensors and closely monitoring the surroundings. The Queen of God also stayed in the room with Jane. This greatly moved Jane, who thought she was a mortal and would be discriminated against here. Unexpectedly, her boyfriend's mother came to accompany her in person, and her boyfriend's best friend guarded the door day and night, fearing that she was not safe enough in the Kingdom of God. What made her angry was that Thor didn't come to see him much in the past two days. However, it was inconvenient for Thor to tell him that a group of Dark Elves are coming to kill you and steal the ether particles in your body. I want to set up defenses outside. This will only make Jane needlessly worried. As Jane's friend and a native of Earth, Daisy naturally stayed with her. In order to strengthen the protective power, the Queen of Gods called Sif to guard the room together. This gave Tianchi a headache. Although Daisy never had any overly intimate behavior after arriving in Asgard, the two women seemed to have a natural connection. There is a vague hostility between them, and even a straight man like Tianchi can feel their secret rivalry. Unfortunately, neither of them has any formal relationship with Apocalypse. Neither of them can declare their sovereignty, 
so they can only face each other in vain. Suddenly, Tianchi, who was sitting quietly, opened his eyes, faced the direction of the rainbow control room, and said softly, here we come. Although it was as soft as a whisper, Heimdall heard it even though he was miles away. He immediately inserted the big sword into the rainbow base, activated his divine power, and scanned the space around Asgard with all his strength. A dark spaceship slowly approached Asgard. Not only was this spaceship completely invisible visually, it was even invisible to Heimdall's eyes. But just because you can't see it, doesn't mean you can't detect it. Fluctuating air, disturbed clouds, and even raised dust all mark its trajectory nakedly. In the original plot, Heimdall didn't notice it, he was just unprepared. Now with full reconnaissance, the Dark Elf spaceship is naturally invisible. B. There was a long blast, and Asgard's alarm sounded. The divine turrets scattered around were raised one after another, and their black muzzles were aimed at the coordinates provided by Heimdall. In the center of Asgard, the main body of the temple, a golden energy shield slowly rose. However, the temple is too big and it will take some time for the protective shield to rise from the bottom. Boom, a divine cannon accurately hit the invisible dark elf spaceship. Ripples rippled through the air, and the spacecraft suddenly emerged from invisibility. The huge hull is like a star, full of oppression. The rainbow control room in front of it is as big as a fruit core on a giant. Now that it had been discovered, the spacecraft was no longer invisible, and immediately the low hum of the engine sounded, and countless small combat ships flew out from the mothership carrying dark elves. The goal of these battleships is very clear, it is the Asgard Temple. Along the way, the battleship completely ignored the divine turrets on the ground and rushed towards the temple with all its strength without dodging, dodging or attacking. They have to rush in when the golden shield is completely raised, so that this mission can be successful. For a time, the ground turret fired countless yellow magical shells, and the battleships were hit one after another. Thick smoke streaked across the sky, falling and hitting the buildings on the ground. Finally, after the Dark Elves paid a heavy price with dozens of battleships, a dozen ships rushed into the temple before the Golden Energy Shield was fully raised. One ship directly broke through countless huge pillars and rushed into the middle of the temple, causing a commotion among the guards inside. The battleships outside began to attack around the temple, looking for opportunities. At the same time, a strange minotaur imprisoned in the dungeon seemed to sense the movement in the outside world, with a strange smile on its face. He dug out a piece of jet black crystal from his body, with blood as black and shiny as petroleum on it, which turned out to be embedded in his body. When the Minotaur squeezed it, the crystal suddenly shattered and turned into a strange energy that seeped into his body. Then, his body glowed red like lava. When the other criminals of the alien race in the same cell saw this, they were so frightened that they retreated until they reached the honeycomb-shaped energy wall before they could no longer retreat. When all the magma-like energy in the body was transformed, the Minotaur grew in size. It originally had only two horns, but now it had four more horns, four on the head and two on the lower jaw. The whole person's aura increased greatly. The Minotaur stepped forward with two steps, grabbed an alien prisoner with one hand, and threw it hard towards the energy wall. Circles of honeycomb-like structures suddenly appeared on the energy wall, but it did not break. The Minotaur seemed to have expected it, and without stopping, he smashed the alien prisoner's brains to pieces. The energy wall was finally overwhelmed, and it flashed a few times before disappearing completely. This mutated Minotaur was the secret hand of the Dark Elves ambushing Asgard in the original plot. At that time, Loki was still watching the fun and showed him the way, you'd better take the stairs on the left. This sentence led the Minotaur to break into Jane's room, eventually leading to the death of the Divine Queen who was guarding it. This time, he didn't have Loki to guide him and went straight to the energy core of the Golden Shield according to his original plan. At this time, capable generals such as Fandral were sent outside to participate in the battle, and naturally there were not many guards left in the innermost energy core. The hexagonal Minotaur passed through all the obstacles and easily came to a Golden Energy Ball. This energy ball is 5 meters in size and rotates slowly, showing the battle situation of the Golden Shield outside in real time. As long as there is an attack, the core will immediately mobilize energy to replenish the attacked area to ensure that the Golden Shield is not broken. Without even thinking about it, the Minotaur pounced with its entire tall body. 
The energy core was disrupted and exploded with a boom, and the Minotaur was also blown away. But he still got the result the Dark Elf wanted. The Golden Shield lost its energy supply and slowly disappeared. Seeing the energy shield disappear, the Dark Elf mothership released more small warships, like wasps, attacking the temple. Thor, who was fighting outside, had no time to think about why the energy shield disappeared. He waved Thor's hammer and flew towards the battleship with thunder and lightning shining all over his body. With one blow, a battleship was often destroyed. However, the battleships were too small and numerous to be killed by the Thunder God, and soon many of them crossed the defense line and approached the temple. Sif, no matter what happens outside, don't come out to protect the Queen and Jane. Tianchi said. Understand, Sif was wearing a yellow leather armor and holding a long sword, staring closely at the window. The door is guarded by Apocalypse, so she doesn't have to worry. She only needs to be careful about the windows that might slip through the window and sneak in. In the eyes of the Dark Elves, the ether particles on Jane's body were like torches in the darkness. There was no way to hide them at such a close distance, and all the battleships began to surge in the direction of Apocalypse. Jane's room is above a loft. Looking out, you can see the panoramic view of Asgard. It was originally a room with a wide view and excellent scenery. But now, this openness is conducive to the attack of the Dark Elves. More than a dozen battleships fanned out and emitted dark red light bombs at the same time, densely covering the entire attic. Apocalypse opened his hand forward, and with a buzz, sound, a yellow divine power shield enveloped the entire attic. All the light bullets melted on the divine power shield, without any effect. The Dark Elves saw that conventional attacks were useless. A battleship seemed to have received the order broke away from the formation, and crashed directly into the attic. I saw a sudden red light behind the battleship, and the engine made a huge low roar. The sharp bow in front was pointed at Tianchi, and it rammed directly into it without hesitation. Ha ha, good time. Originally, they were gorillas outside, and Tianchi couldn't leave the place. It was really difficult for a while. Now there is actually a ship that dares to come to the door, Tianchi laughs. The other hand slowly retracted back, waiting for the battleship to approach, calculating the right moment, and punched forward. Twenty times the power of the Hulk. The fist passed through the divine power shield, exposing half of the arm, just in contact with the front of the battleship. Boom! A white shock wave of air surged up in the divine power shield, and swept wildly around along the surface of the divine power shield. The battleship's more than ten-meter-long hull suddenly came to a standstill. The engine at the back was still spraying to provide huge thrust, but the terrifying power of the apocalypse came from the front. Under the simultaneous action of the two forces, the hull of the ship was squeezed toward the center, as if it had turned into a pancake. Then the pancake finally couldn't bear it anymore, and countless metal fragments shot out in all directions like shrapnel. The metal fragments hit the surrounding battleships, making a dinging sound and a small part of the force returned from the rebound caused the entire attic to sway, as if it was about to collapse. Fortunately, Apocalypse knew what he was doing, and most of the power was borne by him. In the end, Pavilion still withstood it. The attacks of all other battleships suddenly stalled, and they even forgot to launch light bombs. The Dark Elf thought that he might not be able to succeed at once, but he never expected that he would fail in such a way. The physical power can actually blow up a battleship with one punch. This time, the battleships no longer dared to rush into each other. Since the divine shield guarding the attic could not be broken, direct collision would not work, so they simply attacked the surrounding buildings. As long as the surrounding area collapses, the attic will become a rootless place and collapse naturally. Fortunately, Thor arrived in time and restrained some of the battleships, otherwise the attic would collapse and apocalypse would be really difficult to deal with. If he wanted to wipe out all the battleships, he would have to let go of the divine shield. With so many cannons, if he made a mistake and was hit by a shell in the room, the few people inside, except for Sif, would probably not survive. With the addition of Thor, Fandral, Hogan, Volstag and others, as well as the support of ground turrets, apocalypse suddenly felt relaxed. At this moment, there was a boom, the wall in the room was broken, and a strange man ran in. It's the hexagonal minotaur. He was not killed in the explosion that destroyed the core of the energy shield. 
At this time, he sensed the energy of the ether particles and broke through the wall directly. The hexagonal minotaur picked up an Asgardian giant axe from somewhere in his hand and chopped it down directly at Jane and God Queen Frigga. Sif was originally guarding the window, but was caught off guard and barely had time to block the sword in front of the God Queen. But the time was too hasty and there was no accumulation of energy. Under the huge force of the hexagonal minotaur, she was quickly pressed down. The axe was coming before her eyes, and the Queen of Gods was about to die at the hands of the Minotaur like in the original plot. There was a sudden, clang, and the giant axe suddenly stopped in front of the Queen of God, unable to move an inch. In front of the sharp blade was Tianchi's palm, and the body of the giant axe was pinched by Tianchi's fingers to make five fingerprints. The Minotaur was startled and was about to withdraw his axe and attack again, but Apocalypse would not give him another chance. He made a mistake and turned sideways to the Minotaur. With Apocalypse's height, he only reached the Minotaur's shoulders. It was inconvenient to pinch the neck, so Apocalypse simply stretched out his hand and directly grasped the Minotaur's spine through the scales that were as hard as steel. Lifting it with his hand, he threw the Minotaur outward. Just when a dark red light bomb hit, the Minotaur didn't even have time to scream, and was blown into pieces of flesh and blood. Apocalypse quickly held up the divine shield to avoid being sprayed with flesh and blood. Just when Sif thought the danger was over, she was about to turn around and look outside, when suddenly a few grenades were thrown into the hole in the wall that the hexagonal minotaur broke. If it were a grenade thrown by an earthling, Sif would just treat it as a toy and dismiss it. But now it was thrown by the dark elf hiding behind. Sif didn't even think about it and instantly stood in front of the god queen. Fortunately, Apocalypse did not let down his guard. With a, bang, a strong wind suddenly rose in the room, and Apocalypse used a supersonic movement technique that he had not used for a long time. In an instant, he threw several grenades back from the original path. The grenade exploded with a, dong, sound. However, no explosives popped out, but instead formed a small black dot. This small black dot produced a violent gravitational force, and the hair of the God Queen, Jane, Sif, Daisy and others behind Apocalypse rose in the direction of the grenade. The two closest Dark Elves screamed and tried to escape, but it was too late. They were sucked up into the air and sucked in by the small black dot. Finally, they turned into a speck of dust and fell to the ground. This is the extremely weird gravitational collapse bomb of the Dark Elves. At the moment of explosion, the energy of the grenade will be used internally to generate a miniature black hole. Although this black hole is very small and its existence time is extremely short, it is enough to suck people and objects with a radius of 3 meters into it. Under the gravitational pull of a black hole, any substance can instantly destroy its structure. The electrons on the periphery of the atom will be sucked into the nucleus, neutralizing the charge of the proton. You must know that 99% of the space of an atom is empty. With such a compression, no matter how tall a person is, it is no more than the size of a grain of rice. The average strong person is simply unable to resist this instantaneous gravitational force. Once sucked into the micro black hole, he will die. Seeing the strange killing effect of the grenade, Sif had a frightened expression on her face. If Apocalypse were not here and these gravity bombs were allowed to explode around him, even the God Queen might not be able to survive, not to mention himself. However, Queen Frigga did not have a fearful expression on her face, but instead breathed a long sigh of relief. She glanced at the direction where the hexagonal minotaur was broken into pieces of flesh. This was the killing star she hit, and it was now shattered into pieces. Regardless of whether there will be disasters in the future, it at least shows that with the help of Prince Tang, it is indeed possible to change fate against the odds. Sif, don't be distracted. Yes, with most of the battleships wiped out, the Dark Elf's raid could have been declared a failure. But instead of escaping, the mothership in the distance suddenly strengthened its protective shield and rushed directly towards the attic. The star-like huge hull, coupled with the mothership's powerful shield, was bombarded by divine cannons along the way, only causing circles of ripples, and it was unable to break through the defense for a while. However, this toughness is only temporary. The mothership penetrates deep into the hinterland of Asgard, and the firepower inside is getting stronger and stronger. When the people of Asgard come to their senses, they will definitely destroy it on the spot. However, the Dark Elf mothership is obviously not planning to go back. 
As long as you get the ether particles and use the power of the ether particles, you can easily escape back to Waythime. Seeing that the mothership is getting closer and closer, ordinary firepower cannot stop the mothership, and the energy cannon of Rainbow Bridge cannot be prepared so quickly. Upon seeing this, Thor shouted, Fandral, Hogan, Volstag, tell everyone to stay back. What? The queen is still up there. Can't go back. Fandral, Hogan, Volstag and others couldn't believe their ears. Is this an order from Prince Thor? The queen of gods and your girlfriend are still in the attic. Not only did the three of them not retreat, they continued to attack. They wanted to block the mothership with their bodies and buy some time for the attic. Thor was so angry, he cursed in his heart, these idiots. He had no choice but to swing the hammer, accelerate instantly, and drag the three people away. Fandral and others were so angry that they yelled, Thor, do you even care about your mother? How do you deserve to be a prince? The god of thunder knocked them on the head and cursed, who said you don't care? Mother's life is naturally protected. I am saving your life. However, the mothership is so big, Prince Tang's divine shield cannot possibly block it. Just as he was talking, an inexplicable fluctuation spread throughout Asgard. The entire kingdom of God fell silent. Infinite divine fist. A huge blue fist mark shot out from the attic. It was only the size of a human head when it first appeared. It became bigger as it got closer to the mothership, as if the sun was shining on the dark elf's mothership with its vast and unparalleled divine power. Boom, a loud noise spread throughout Asgard. The protective shield of the dark elf mothership could not even block the fist seal for one-tenth of a second before it was broken by the fist seal. The overloaded energy furnaces on the mothership exploded one after another, and dark red firelight faintly emerged from the ship. However, the force of the fist seal remained unabated, and before the explosion on the mothership fully exploded, it was directly destroyed by the fist seal and swept away. The huge fist mark passed through the middle of the star-like mothership, smashing most of the hull into nothingness, leaving only a donut-like outer shell. The fist mark was not destroyed, and after passing through the mothership, it flew towards the starry sky in front of Asgard, and finally disappeared from everyone's sight. Fandral, Hogan, and Volstag were frightened for a while, and looked at the direction where the fist print disappeared, dumbfounded. No wonder Saul told us to leave it alone, it turns out that Prince Tang is such a pervert. If he had stood in front of the mothership and the mothership had not hit him to death, he would probably have died from this terrifying punch. If Prince Tang had come out earlier and punched twice, would we still have had to work so hard? Chapter 91 In the Attic, even the well-informed God Queen opened her eyes in surprise. She knew that Prince Tang had completed the unprecedented nine refinements of the Divine Body, but there was also a process to cultivation, right? How long did it take for him to be able to destroy a starship with one punch? On the contrary, Jane and Daisy reacted better. Although they were not in New York during the New York Wormhole War, after the war, almost everyone on the planet had seen the video of Apocalypse destroying a starship with one punch. Although the video was shot far away, that feat is etched in everyone's heart. However, watching it in the video and watching it up close are completely different, and the shock is simply indescribable. At this moment, the entire Asgard was silent, looking at Jung Jung in the direction of the huge fist mark in trance. Some older Asgardians began to whisper in their hearts, wondering if the God King could have punched this punch when he was at his peak. I'm afraid not, right? For a race that can run rampant across the universe, the mothership cannot be ignored by any enemy. Not only does it have many weapons, but the most important thing is that it also has a super strong energy shield. Normal attacks cannot even break through the outside. However, such a mothership has already turned into a donut with just one punch. Seeing the remaining fragments of the mothership falling to the ground, Apocalypse was unmoved and still guarded the attic. Now inside the temple, I don't know if there are any remaining fish that have slipped through the net, so it's better to be cautious. Thor flew over and gave Apocalypse a firm hug, brother, thank you. As long as you are here, I am not worried at all. Fandral, Hogan, Volstag and others saluted Apocalypse from a distance, feeling faintly guilty for their distrust just now. Then go with others to clean up the battlefield and remove the remaining remnants. Apocalypse did not leave Jane's room until all locations had been swept and the few hidden Dark Elf soldiers had been cleared out. This time, with Tianchi's reminder, 
there were not many casualties, but more of them smashed some buildings. After the war, Apocalypse, God King Odin, God Queen Frigga, Thor, Jane, Sif, Daisy and others held a simple banquet. Odin expressed his gratitude to Apocalypse many times, and even Frigga frequently toasted to Apocalypse. This time, it was not just as simple as repelling the Dark Elves, but it also meant that the God Queen had changed her destiny. Since the fate of the God Queen has changed, it means that the fate of Asgard has also changed. This is why Odin and Frigga are so grateful for the revelation. After saying the polite words, Tianchi asked Frigga, Queen God, have you seen a fat Thor with a beer belly and a beard recently? Thor was not happy when he heard this, thinking that Tianchi was joking on him, and said, Tang, what are you talking about? I have a figure that will not deform in 3000 years, and I still have a beer belly. Are you afraid of drinking with me later? Frigga smiled and ignored Thor's interruption, and said to Tianchi, that's not true. What did Prince Tang imply? Tianchi shook his head and said, I didn't see it, which means it's a good thing. During the previous wormhole battle in New York, Apocalypse saw Iron Man, Banner Giant, Ant-Man and Captain America from other timelines, indicating that the future was not very optimistic. If nothing changes in the future and Thanos wins, this time should be the time for Thor and the Raccoon Rocket to come back to get the Aether Particles the Infinity Stones. The original plot was that Thor came back from time travel and saw his mother who was still alive. He was very sad and couldn't help but show up to see her. He also wanted to remind his mother of his murder. Unexpectedly, Frigga could tell at a glance that he came from the future, and said, you must have suffered a lot in the future, right? Since the Queen of Gods has not been encountered, it means that Frigga's fate has changed, and even the fates of Asgard and Thor have changed. Well, Frigga nodded, if Thor becomes like that, it means the future will be very bad. Thank you, Prince Tang. Mother, how could you listen to Tang's nonsense? It's not like you don't know that we, the God Clan, even if we stay at home playing games and drinking beer every day, we are still in good shape. Jane, please touch my abdominal muscles. Jian Kai was not as heartless as Thor. She slapped his hand away and whispered, with so many people watching, be more serious. By the way, Thor, when you were cleaning the battlefield, did you find the dark elf King Malekith? Apocalypse asked. I didn't see that, could it be that he was annihilated by your punch? At this time, Odin said, Malekis has not come. If he comes, I can sense his breath. Tianchi breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, it's good that he didn't die. The god of thunder was unhappy and said, Brother, why do you feel sorry for the enemy? If you hadn't warned us in advance, Asgard would have suffered huge losses. That's not true. Apocalypse shook his head, Malekis has the secret to manipulate etheric particles. If he dies, I'm afraid it will be lost. Now, Jane's safety depends on him. The God of Thunder stood up and said loudly, Don, let's kill Waithaim now and force him to hand over his secret. Tianchi responded, Okay, it's refreshing enough, it's time for us to fight back. Let's kill him in his lair and take the method by force to see if he dares to agree. In the original plot, Loki, Thor, and Jane tricked the Dark Elf King into taking out the Aether Particles in a cunning way. But now that Loki is away, Apocalypse and Thor can't pull off this trick. Apocalypse has some misunderstandings and is worrying about how to deceive the Dark Elf King and help take out the Aether Particles, when he is awakened by Thor's words. If you have the strength, why do you want to play tricks? Jane put her hand on her forehead, feeling a little headache, and seemed to see the two of them again when they first met on Earth. After a hasty meal, Apocalypse, Thor, and Jane arrived at the Rainbow Bridge. Daisy and Sif wanted to go along. But Daisy is a mortal, and Apocalypse cannot take her. Daisy can't find any reason this time, so she has to stay in Asgard gloomily. Sif originally thought that Apocalypse would take her with her, but she didn't expect that Apocalypse would also refuse. The main reason is that Sif's strength is low. Not only will she not be able to help, she may have to take care of one more person. This time we are going to Waithaim, the country of the Dark Elves. Sif's strength is not bad for a few, but if she faces thousands of enemies, she is no different from Jane. Seeing that Sif couldn't follow her, Daisy's depression was instantly relieved by more than half, and she felt that the apocalypse was not targeting her alone. Sif also seemed to sense Daisy's gloating mood. 
Their eyes were aligned in the void, as if sparks were about to spark. Apocalypse took a look and realized that he couldn't afford to offend him, so he had better leave quickly. After the light of the rainbow flashed, Apocalypse, Thor, and Jane disappeared into Asgard, and in the blink of an eye, they had arrived at Waithheim. Wertheim is dark, the ground is desolate and dilapidated, there are almost no plants, and the sky seems to be pressing down. It is extremely depressing, and a normal person will go crazy if he stays here for a few days. Only dark elves naturally like this kind of environment. My hell, his heaven. The country of Waithheim is so big that you can't even see it at a glance. There were dark clouds everywhere and the light was not good. Apocalypse couldn't tell whether it was a planet or a flat continent. But it is estimated that except for Asgard, no one is so free that they insist on flattening the planet into a pie. For a moment, Thor was a little confused. In such a big country, where can I find the Dark Elf King? If the Dark Elf King doesn't want to see him and just hides in a dark place, two or three people may not be able to find him even if they spend a lifetime looking for him. What's more, we have to be prepared for sneak attacks by Dark Elves along the way. Tianchi waited for a while, but there was no response from the Dark Land. The Rainbow Bridge had just arrived, and it was impossible not to know about it in a dark place like Waithheim. Either they don't want to come out, or they don't dare to come out to see Tianchi and the others. Asgard's punch must have sent the image back to Waithheim. No matter how impulsive the Dark Elf was, he knew that Apocalypse was not easy to mess with. In this case, Tianchi will not be polite. You are a bad visitor if you come to the door. If you don't come out, I will kick the door down. I'll take action later, you speak. Tianchi said to the God of Thunder. What do you mean? Before Thor could react, Apocalypse suddenly punched the sky. With a soft, bang, sound, the huge dark blue fist flew towards the sky. After flying for dozens of kilometers, it stopped in the sky. From a distance, it looks like a full moon. The light blue light shone on the land of Waithheim, immediately reflecting many dark elves hiding in the shadows. The elves panicked for a moment, then quickly searched for the nearest dark hiding place. However, this is just the beginning. Bang 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 bang. With dozens of soft sounds in a row, Tianchi fired dozens of infinite divine fists in a thousand mile radius. These fist marks are all under the control of his spiritual consciousness, hanging in the sky and can be blasted down at any time, like the Dark Elf version of the Sword of Damocles. Dozens of infinite fist seals are dozens of moons. The light blue light illuminates everything within sight into a strange blue day. Apocalypse could already hear countless low roars in the distance. Obviously, this behavior had made the Dark Elves extremely angry. But no one dared to act rashly. Because everyone can sense the terrifying energy fluctuations of dozens of moons above their heads. Once they fall, it will be a disaster for the world. Thor finally understood what speaking meant and shouted, Malekis, come out quickly. If you dare to attack Asgard, you must be mentally prepared to face Asgard's wrath. Seeing no one responded, Tianchi stopped talking and snapped his fingers, and a fist mark fell from the sky in the distance and hit the ground. Suddenly, it was like a nuclear explosion. A huge mushroom cloud rose from the ground. The light blue infinite energy spread out around dozens of kilometers with the mushroom cloud as the center. Wherever it passed, sand and rocks flew, and the mountains collapsed. As soon as many dark elves came into contact with this energy, they turned into fly ash and were swept away without a trace along with the waves of dust. The reason why Apocalypse is so cruel is not just the grudge between Asgard and the dark elves. It is the natural and essential opposition between the two major races. Light and darkness, live or die, regardless of justice or evil, the victory of either party means the massive destruction of the other party. The reason why the Dark Elves are weak now is not because they are humble, but because the Light Race has won. Let the stars shine and the light shine in the universe. Only then can all Light Races, including humans, reproduce. If the Dark Elves succeed in extinguishing the star, most ordinary people on Earth will die in just one day. The rest, without light, will eventually disappear one after another due to temperature, food, etc. This is also the reason why thousands of years ago, Thor's grandfather, King Bauer, directly massacred the Dark Elves. From the height of King Bauer, he could naturally see that the Dark Elves were different from the races in other countries, and there was basically no possibility for the two races to coexist peacefully. 
This is an opposition between the essence of life, a battle for survival, and there is no mercy. The winning side is justice. If one day, the Dark Elves extinguish the stars and occupy an absolute position, then in their country, there must be rumors that the once evil race of light is occupying their place of survival and massacring their people. When the energy of the infinite fist dissipated, Apocalypse could sense that countless Dark Elves were already ready to move within a hundred miles. However, it seems that someone stopped the behavior of these Dark Elves. I saw the Dark Elf King Malekith approaching slowly from a distance and appeared in front of Apocalypse Thunder God Jane and the others. Thunder God Thor, son of Odin, what do you want? The ether particles are the sacred objects of our clan. It is only natural that we send people to get them back. Thor said, it's very simple, as long as you give us the method of manipulating etheric particles. Your sin of invading Asgard can be written off. Malekith said angrily, impossible. Only our people can control the sacred objects of our clan. Really, Tianchi said lightly, I heard that you only obtained the ether particles thousands of years ago. How did it become your sacred object? Then whose sacred object was it 137 billion years ago? HMPH. In the beginning, there was darkness, and the entire universe belonged to us dark elves. If the celestial clan hadn't created stars everywhere, how could you humans have done anything? When the elf king saw the weak Jane leaning on Thor, he immediately understood what was going on. I can help you take out the ether particles and save the woman. But there are two conditions. One is that the ether particles belong to me, and the other is that you must remove the fist seal in the sky and promise not to invade each other. Tianchi took a step forward and said, Malekis, I think you are mistaken. It is not you who threaten us, but we who threaten you. We only have one person, and you have thousands of people. Let's see who is more powerful, important. Malekith laughed loudly and said, My people can sacrifice their lives for the great mission of reviving their homeland, but will he give up the beauty in his arms? Tianchi didn't answer. He snapped his fingers again with a pop sound, and another fist mark fell to the ground. A huge wave of dust rolled in from afar, and no one knew how many dark elves disappeared. Apocalypse raised a divine shield to block the dust. I saw Malekith's ferocious expression looming in the dust waves, and he was obviously extremely hateful. If only Thor had come, he would have already accepted the Dark Elf King's proposal. As long as he could remove the ether particles and save Jane's life, he didn't care about anything else. But if Apocalypse wants to control the etheric particles, he must act tougher. What's more, we must prevent the Dark Elves from using ether particles to return the universe to darkness. Neither public nor private, we can give in. It just depends on who is tougher. Elf King Malekith's face was twitching, but he still did not respond. There are already some Dark Elves in the distance preparing weapons, and some battleships are already flying towards this side. It seems that you are ready to fight. Then there is no need to continue talking. Apocalypse pressed down with one hand, and three fist marks from a distance accurately hit the battleship group. Even the mothership couldn't withstand the infinite divine fist. Ordinary battleships didn't even have a chance to escape. They all turned into ashes and disappeared with the air waves. Seeing that Apocalypse was about to take action again, the elf king couldn't bear it anymore and shouted, Stop! I promise to give you the method. Tianchi said, I hope you won't play tricks. If anything happens to our people, her life will need to be repaid by your entire clan. As he spoke, the remaining dozens of fist seals were slowly pressed down. The fist mark, which was originally the size of the moon, visually became several times larger after it was lowered, and the feeling of oppression was particularly obvious. The elf king held back his anger and passed on a formula. Tianchi compared his previous experience of using the cosmic Rubik's Cube to pull ether particles, and thought it was feasible, so he said, Thor, let Jane lie down and don't touch him. I'll give it a try. It is good. Using his divine power, Tianchi sensed the ether particles according to the formula provided by the Elf King. Gradually, a dark red liquid flowed out of Jane's eyes. In Jane's consciousness, she seemed to see the sun go out and the earth plunge into darkness. Then this darkness spread from the sun to the universe, the stars disappeared, and finally, the entire universe became dead and fell into darkness. The outflowing ether particles moved strangely in the air, as if they were alive, looking for the next target. Finally, 
Jane's body trembled slightly, and the last ether particle was completely taken out. Thor hurried over to help Jane up. Apocalypse continued to manipulate the formula, trying to get the ether particles into his hand, when he suddenly heard the elf king laughing wildly. Ha 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 ha, it's time. Eight huge holes suddenly appeared in the sky of Waitheim. Each hole was several kilometers in diameter, and the scene of another world could be clearly seen. Apocalypse even saw a city on Earth. The various words and buildings on it clearly showed that it was a western city. Pedestrians over there obviously saw these eight strange holes and couldn't help but scream. This is what God King Odin said, the celestial bodies converge and the nine realms are aligned. At this moment, not only can the nine major kingdoms be easily crossed, but the gravity, temperature and light of other worlds can also be affected by each other. Apocalypse suddenly felt his hands tighten, and the ether particles he controlled suddenly flew towards the elf king. Apocalypse secretly said something was wrong, Malekith actually kept a secret, obviously the formula passed down was incomplete. The ether particles in front of him were about to be taken away by Malekith. Thor instinctively sent out a bolt of lightning, hitting the ether particles. With a thunderous sound of, boom, the ether particles exploded, and dark red explosion waves raised dust all over the sky. Tianchi hurriedly held up a divine shield. Although this explosion was not strong, and he and Thor were fine, Jien, as an ordinary person, might not be able to bear it. Have the ether particles been destroyed? Thunder God said happily. No, infinity stones. Only the power of infinity stones can destroy each other. Take Jane away quickly. Thor nodded, hugged Jane, and flew into the hole in the earth. In the blink of an eye, he appeared in the opposite city, as if he had just stepped through a door. On Tianchi's side, he no longer had any scruples, and pressed down with his hands. Dozens of infinite fist seals suddenly came down. The earth cracked and the planet shook. Like the Doomsday Judgment, Dozens of infinite fist seals covered the entire kingdom of Waitheim. A few even passed through the hole and entered another world, destroying a mountain range in that country. The roar of, rumbling, oscillated back and forth in Waitheim, and the light blue infinite energy swept every corner of Waitheim, completely exterminating all the dark elves. Seeing his people being destroyed in front of his eyes, Malekith looked ferocious and smiled miserably, Since you destroyed my homeland, I will perish together with the nine kingdoms. As he spoke, Malekith kept turning the seals with his hands, and the ether particles that had just exploded slowly rose from the ground. But at this time, the ether particles were no longer in a liquid state, but turned into dark red crystals. The crystal rotated faster and faster, and finally turned into a tornado, shrouding Malekith in the center. The tornado was like a millstone, grinding Malekith's armor, flesh, and bones into powder layer by layer, and finally completely integrated into the ether particle tornado. At this time, the tornado changed from dark red to blood red, becoming more and more weird. Ha 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 ha, people on earth, please destroy us together. Malekith's roar rose from the tornado. Tianchi didn't know what kind of method he used, but he was able to abandon his body and completely combine with the ether particles. Then it depends on whether you have the ability infinite divine fist. Apocalypse punched the tornado directly. But the tornado was only shaken slightly, and then the fist mark passed through the middle and disappeared into the darkness in the distance. The power that was enough to destroy starships turned out to be as weak as hitting the air. This was the first time that Apocalypse encountered the invincible infinite divine fist and failed. He punched a few more times, but the result was the same, it had no effect. Malekith did not untangle with Apocalypse, drew a strange trajectory, and instantly rushed into the hole on the other side of the earth. Tianchi had no choice but to rise into the air and follow in. As soon as he crossed the void, his vision, gravity, and temperature completely changed, and he had returned to the earth. The first thing you see is a square. There is a straight stone line on the ground, and at one end of the line there is a stainless steel sculpture with the words, Greenwich, Prime Meridian, written on it. Greenwich is a small town in the kingdom of Big Butt, and the most famous one is the meridian in the town. As early as more than 100 years ago, the World Longitude Conference decided to designate the meridian passing through Greenwich as the prime meridian as the starting point for calculating time and geographical longitude on the Earth. Since then, this town and this meridian have had special significance. Unexpectedly, 
Apocalypse turned around and returned to Greenwich in the original plot. It seems that the inertia of the sacred timeline is still very strong. Apocalypse doesn't know how far he has to go to completely change the timeline. But at present, it seems that I am more like a pebble in the river of time. It may change some subtle currents, but on the whole, it is still running on the original river course. If I hadn't personally protected her before, I'm afraid God Queen Frigga might not have been able to pass the critical point of life and death. At this time, Malekith brought a blood-red ether tornado, directly rolling the nearby observatory buildings into powder, growing stronger and stronger. In the blink of an eye, it grew from a few meters tall to hundreds of meters tall. Even the clouds and the sky were stirred by it and slowly gathered here. Seeing such a strange situation, people in the square screamed and ran away. At this time, the shield side was already full of alarms, remotely mobilize troops near Europe and want to come to support. However, Iron Man and others are on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, separated by an ocean from the Big Butt Kingdom in Western Europe, and cannot get there quickly. Malekith laughed sinisterly in the tornado, ha 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 ha, earthlings, you can't stop me anymore. I will create a paradise at the beginning of the universe for the people of the Dark Elves, ha 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 ha. The ether particle tornado turns bigger and bigger. The eight holes in the sky gradually overlap. When the eight holes completely overlap, it will be the time when the nine realms converge and form a line. At that time, the gravity and energy of the nine realms will increase geometrically along this line. The energy of ether particles can use this power to instantly cover the nine realms. If Malekith succeeds, the darkness and destruction of the nine kingdoms will not be the end. If there is no strong enough force to intervene, it may even affect the entire universe. Apocalypse's thoughts suddenly changed. In the original plot, Malekith was not integrated with the ether particles. As a result, he was hit hard by Thor and his body was transported to another country, and then he was crushed to death by the passing spacecraft. Then the ether particles lost human control and came to rest. But now, Malekith cannot be separated from the ether particles, and the infinite god Fist cannot destroy or stop it. What should we do? Tianchi searched the memories in his mind, but there was no solution. The blood-red tornado grew larger and larger, already reaching a height of several thousand meters. The clouds in the sky were rolled up into a huge storm that spread for hundreds of kilometers. Starting from the center of Greenwich, it covers the entire Big Fart Kingdom. The eight holes in the sky are getting closer and closer, and now they have overlapped to form a figure eight lying on the ground, or in other words, this is an infinity symbol infinity. Ha, 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 ha. Malekith laughed in the tornado thousands of meters high. The huge sound mixed with the roaring wind spread throughout Western Europe, and everyone could hear it. Change. As long as the eight holes are completely unified, he will succeed. No matter how powerful the earth force in front of him is, he will not be able to stop him. Huge waves had already set off in the North Atlantic at this time. Even Bingchang Island, which was more than 1,000 kilometers away, was affected by the waves. A Category Typhoon hit the coastline, and docks and coastal cities suffered unprecedented disasters. What would Thor do if he were here? In the original plot, the Divine Timeline arranged for Thor to defeat Malekith. If the Divine Time is correct and Thor is here, Malekith will still fail. However, at this time, in order to protect Jane, Thor had already taken her and ran away without knowing where. He trusts Tianchi too much. If there is a problem that I can solve, my brother will definitely be able to solve it. If you can't solve it yourself, he can solve it too. In this case, he might as well protect his woman first and let his brothers take the lead. Apocalypse puts himself into Thor's situation. With the arrangement of the sacred timeline, there must be a way for Thor to solve the current problem. In the end, what will Thor do? Suddenly, a smile appeared on Tianchi's lips. With the brash character of the God of Thunder, he would definitely do this. So, Apocalypse soared into the sky, flying towards the blood-red tornado that was already several kilometers in diameter, and without even thinking, he crashed into it. The ether particle crystals in the tornado were like countless knives, peeling off the flesh and blood from Apocalypse's body bit by bit. Even though Apocalypse is a nine refined divine body, he cannot resist the attack of the reality stone. In the blink of an eye, only a bloody skeleton was left. However, Tianchi also succeeded. 
Although the formula for manipulating ether particles passed down by Malekith was incomplete, he successfully integrated his consciousness into the tornado with the help of his own flesh and blood. Malekith, who was attached to the ether particle, was shocked, how did you get in? You guess, Apocalypse laughed, now that Malekith has been found, the rest will be much easier to handle. Although the manipulation method is incomplete, Apocalypse's spiritual consciousness is much more powerful than Malekith. He uses his strength to make up for the lack of mantras and forcefully diverts the tornado towards the North Atlantic. How could Malekith give in? The hole in the sky in front of him was about to merge into one, and success or failure was right in front of him. Relying on the fact that he had more control, he slowly pushed the tornado that had just moved back and rolled it towards the hollow. Seeing that he was about to approach the void, Apocalypse naturally couldn't let him get what he wanted. He drank a few bottles of Golden Recovery Potion to generate a part of flesh and blood. As soon as the flesh and blood was generated, it was blown into the tornado by ether particles. This part of flesh and blood gave Apocalypse added power, expanded the areas controlled by Divine Consciousness, and slowly pushed the tornado towards the North Atlantic. In this way, the two fell into a tug of war. Giant tornadoes thousands of meters high sometimes move to the North Atlantic and sometimes run inland. Wherever he passed, the mountains were cut into flatlands, the lakes were drained, and blood-red rainwater poured like a waterfall on the land of the Big Butt Kingdom. However, it was never possible to get close to the void. At this time, the eight holes in the sky finally merged into one perfectly. Everyone who sees the void can see nine different worlds at this moment, seemingly merging into one. The nine kingdoms suddenly darkened, and the light seemed to be drawn away by the strange energy of the nine realms connection at this moment. Asgard's Heimdall, Thor, and the powerful men from other countries knew what was happening at this moment, and their hearts tightened at this moment. If that man fails, then, starting from this moment, the nine realms will be plunged into darkness forever. In a moment, it seems very short and yet it seems very long. People in Western Europe only heard the violent howling wind in the sky, waiting for their fate to be pronounced. The Nine Realms were terribly silent at this time, and some even wondered if they had failed. From now on, the Nine Kingdoms will be the territory of the Dark Elves. However, a ray of light gave them hope. The perfect and unified hole in the sky, from the original absolute darkness, slowly revealed a ray of light from the edge, illuminating every country. The powerful man from the Nine Realms finally breathed a sigh of relief. As time goes by, there is more and more light, and the whole slowly changes from a perfect circle to an infinite symbol infinity. Then, infinite infinity is divided into eight, getting farther and farther. No, Malekith roared unwillingly in the tornado, and the roar set off bigger waves, but it was to no avail. Malekith did not expect that he would rather bear the threat of dozens of fist seals from Apocalypse, sacrifice the entire people of Waythime, and even sacrifice himself, but in the end he would fall short. If we miss this once in 5,000 year opportunity, we will have to wait at least 5,000 years for such an opportunity in the future, or even, never come. At least now, he can no longer see it. Sacrificing oneself comes at the cost of consuming his flesh, blood, and soul. Malekith felt that his power was slowly disappearing. After a while, even if Apocalypse did not attack him, he would disappear into the sky and earth. Ha 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 ha, Malekith laughed miserably, in that case, I will support you, Earthling. Malekith's soul, which originally controlled the tornado, completely gave up controlling the etheric particles and directly entangled with Apocalypse's consciousness. In an attempt to destroy Apocalypse's soul in a lose-lose way. However, he discovered a terrible fact. How is it possible? How can your soul be so indestructible? This is impossible. Malekith's soul rubbed against Apocalypse's soul, like smoke passing over steel. The smoke was blown away, but the steel was not affected at all. It was also the first time that Apocalypse discovered that his soul had such a wonderful use. Before, he had only heard from Queen Frigga and the people from the Time Variation Administration that he was of noble nature, but he didn't know what use it was. Now I have finally discovered a benefit. At least in the soul level confrontation, I have an absolute advantage. Apocalypse simply took the initiative, and his divine consciousness wrapped up Malekith's soul, slowly wearing it away like a millstone. Malekith was trapped in the tornado, unable to hide. 
Gradually, the power controlling the tornado became weaker and weaker, and the mental fluctuations of cursing the apocalypse became smaller and smaller. In the end, it completely disappeared. The king of the dark elves of a generation has died. The control of the ether particles was finally completely owned by Apocalypse. Apocalypse transferred the tornado to the surface of the North Atlantic Ocean, then picked up the incomplete mantra and slowly collected the ether particles into his palms. Without the energy drive of ether particles, the tornado turned around and dissipated powerlessly between the sky and the earth. The seawater swept up into the sky lost its wind, and suddenly it was like a gap in the Milky Way. It rained like a waterfall in the sky for several minutes before the clouds closed and the rain stopped. At this time, Tianchi was really miserable. Most of the bones in his body were worn away, leaving only a skeletal hand holding a group of dark red crystals. Tianchi took out the golden recovery potion from the storage compartment and poured it on the bones. At this time, the flesh and blood had been worn away, so naturally he couldn't drink it. I poured a dozen bottles in a row before my body was complete. The divine body is so powerful that it is very rare to be able to endure the grinding of ether particle crystals for such a long time. But it also means that to recover, more and more recovery potions are needed, of higher and higher levels. Fortunately, the Dark Elf King's plan was prevented this time, and the system kept prompting, ding ding ding, for the income recovery potion. As the number of recovery potions reaches a certain amount, golden ones are automatically synthesized, and then purple potions are synthesized. This time, many more people were saved than in the New York Wormhole War. After all, there is no comparison between a city and the Nine Realms. After his body's flesh and blood fully recovered, Apocalypse looked back at the Great Fart Kingdom and the miserable conditions in the coastal cities of Western Europe. He sighed slightly and flew across the Atlantic Ocean towards the United States. There will be more and more world-destroying wars of this level in the future, and they will become bigger and bigger. If we can ensure that the Earth is not destroyed, it is already a victory. It is impossible to expect to protect everyone. We can only hope to minimize casualties. Back in New York, Thor was already waiting for him. This guy is so heartless that he doesn't even know how dangerous Tianchi has been through. When they met, he said, Tang, why are you taking so long? I've been waiting for you to drink for a long time. Go away. You guys, you just want to hug the beauty and run away, and you don't care about your brothers. Who told Malekith to make such a fuss? How dare I leave Jane on the European continent? When I carry her across the Atlantic, I can no longer help you. It was rare that Jane didn't despise Apocalypse for leading Thor as she did before, so she said, thank you, seriously. Ever since she met Apocalypse, Apocalypse's ranking in Thor's heart was even higher than hers. As a woman, how could she give Apocalypse any good looks? Until the later battle in the western town, her treatment in Asgard, and this annihilation crisis, Apocalypse showed great strength and responsibility. Jian Kai finally expressed his inner respect for Tianchi, and the original prejudiced image was wiped away. Fortunately, Tianchi didn't know, otherwise he would have vomited blood. I have worked so hard that I have even stopped a world-destroying battle, so that I can reverse the prejudice in a woman's heart. It is conceivable that once a woman has prejudice, it will be terrible. Without the ability to save the world, it may be difficult to reverse it in her lifetime. After the war, the aftermath was naturally arranged by S.H.I.E.L.D. and other departments. At this time, in Western Europe, a large number of people went to rescue, and countless ships were searching for survivors at sea. On Apocalypse's side, he took a break from his busy schedule and had a good time with Black Widow for a while. However, I always seem to forget something. No matter what, if you can't think of things anyway, they are unimportant things. While the apocalypse is at ease, a conspiracy theory is quietly popular in Western society. Due to the huge casualties and disasters, some people have raised questions, saying that all this is a conspiracy by the United States and an accident deliberately caused to control the world. There are not that many super villains at all. They are all American institutions such as S.H.I.E.L.D. They are testing new super weapons. When they get out of control, everything is blamed on the super villains. SHIELD is one of the thug organizations in the United States. This kind of conspiracy theory is as absurd and boring as someone in Apocalypse's previous life saying that the moon landing was fake, but there are always people who believe it. 
an invisible pusher takes advantage of people's grief and spreads it quietly behind the scenes. Tianchi doesn't know about these conspiracy theories and doesn't care. On the contrary, not long after, a happy event ushered in. Apocalypse received an invitation from Asgard to attend the coronation ceremony of Thor. In fact, God King Odin has long wanted to pass the throne to Thor, but there have been various obstacles before. The first time he failed, and then he delayed again and again. Now that there was finally a period of peace, Odin and Frigga quickly made arrangements. Thor was somewhat reluctant at first, but after going through so much, he found that he was more suitable to be a warrior than a king. To be the king of the kingdom of God, you need to know many things, and it is far from just being strong in combat. But now Odin was at his knees, and he was the only one by his side. Loki's whereabouts are unknown. Even if he returns to Asgard, he will not be able to succeed to the throne based on his previous actions. So, Thor just rushed to the shelves and officially became the king of Asgard. The moment he saw Thor put on the crown, Odin finally felt relieved. Now, the throne has been passed down smoothly, and with the help of the new prince Apocalypse, even the fate of God Queen Frigga has changed. There is no need to worry too much about the fate of Asgard in the future, at least it will not be worse than what we saw in the long river of time. It's worse. At the banquet, Tianchi saw Daisy again. What I had forgotten before turned out to be Daisy. Forgot to bring her back to Earth. Fortunately, Daisy was brought here by Apocalypse. Although she is a mortal on Earth, she does not face any discrimination in Asgard these days. On the contrary, she witnessed Tianchi's peerless power up close and personal, and felt that the gap between herself and Tianchi was too big. How could a godlike man like Tianchi, an ordinary person like herself, think highly of her? So, he asked the god queen Frigga to cultivate Asgard's divine power. Unexpectedly, the queen of gods did not refuse and passed on a set of cultivation methods to her. In the eyes of the queen, these ordinary methods of cultivating divine power are of little value. But if Daisy can increase Apocalypse's favor for Asgard, even if it is just a little bit more, the queen will not hesitate to do it. Not many days later, when Tianchi saw her again, her and plump figure actually had a hint of heroism. Coupled with the armor and long sword, it is almost the same as the divine warrior suit, but Daisy has a completely different style from Sif. Sorry, I forgot to bring you to Earth last time, Tianchi said. It doesn't matter, Daisy whispered, you are saving the world, how can I let you be distracted by a little woman like me? When Apocalypse heard these words, he seemed very familiar. In the various funny jokes about men and women he had seen in his previous life, he often saw similar scenes. If a woman's words are emotional, you often have to listen to them in reverse. Fortunately, Apocalypse and Daisy don't have a formal relationship, so they simply don't want to talk about it, ahem. After attending the coronation ceremony, do you want to return to Earth or stay in Asgard? Daisy looked at Tianchi and said, where will you be? Apocalypse was having a headache and didn't know how to answer. This was not just a location. At this moment, Heimdall sent news. Prince Tang, the person you asked me to find has been found. He is now in prison on Xandar. Tianchi felt happy, finally there was news. Previously, he asked Heimdall to help find Star-Lord and gave him a rough description of Star-Lord's appearance. His location was probably in the star field near Xandar Star in the Nova Empire. Even if Heimdall could see the universe, trying to find someone in such a large star field would be like looking for a needle in a haystack, and there would be no news yet. Unexpectedly, there is finally good news today. If Star-Lord is still in Xandar prison at this time, it should be in the early stages of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume. 1. At this time, Star-Lord had just obtained the Cosmic Spirit Ball and wanted to trade on Xandar. Unexpectedly, he was snatched away by Gamora, and then stabbed by Raccoon Rocket. Groot, the Tree Man, helped, and finally fell into a big melee between three parties and four people. In the end, no one benefited, and they were caught by Shander's patrol police. The reason why Apocalypse is looking for Star-Lord is that he wants to obtain the Cosmic Spirit Ball through him. The Cosmic Spirit Ball is just a packaging device, which actually contains the Infinity Stone of Power. This gem is extremely overbearing. If it is not encapsulated by a spiritual ball, just put it on the surface of the planet without doing anything. 
the violent energy can quickly react with all organic matter and easily destroy a planet. Secondly, he wants more superhero luck. Although luck has not shown any use at present, judging from the recovery potions given by the system, they seem to be very few and simple, but they often help one get through difficulties at critical moments. For example, for the first time, I gained three times the power of the Hulk and gained the ability to protect myself. The second time he allowed himself to successfully refine his divine body for the ninth time, laying a solid foundation for future cultivation. For the third time, he was able to replenish his flesh and blood during the battle against Malekith and the Aether Particle Tornado, so that he would not be swept to death. As for Iron Man, Black Widow and other close friends, the number of times their lives have been saved by the recovery potion is countless. Therefore, no matter what the use of luck is, get it first and then talk about it. Thinking of this, Apocalypse said to Daisy, I'm going on a long trip recently, not on Earth, nor in Asgard. Can you take me with you? Ahem, this trip is a bit dangerous. I plan to go alone. Oh, Daisy was a little disappointed, then I'll stay in Asgard. Your first stop when you come back must be to go through the Rainbow Bridge and return to Asgard first, right? Yeah, Tianchi nodded. Although the Rainbow Bridge can be transmitted to any corner of the universe, it needs the Rainbow Bridge itself as a transfer station. For example, if Apocalypse is on Earth and wants to go to Xandar, he must first teleport to Asgard and then teleport from Asgard. Apocalypse told Thor about his long trip, and Thor immediately shouted to participate. But seeing the looks in Odin and Frigga's eyes, he still hesitated. After all, leaving Asgard and running around just after becoming king is not what a king of the kingdom of God should be like. Brother, I haven't been to Sander yet. If you come back and tell me anything interesting, I'll go on vacation when I have time. Thor patted Tianchi on the shoulder and said. Tianchi smiled and said. Look at your father, where did he travel before he left office? Be your king. Thor's expression changed, as if in his memory, his father had really never left Asgard. Could it be that at such a young age, he had to be tied to this throne for the rest of his life? No, no, we have to find a way to pass the throne to someone else. Thor looked around for a week, and finally his eyes fell on Apocalypse, ahem. Tang, when you come back from Sander, are you interested in becoming a king? How about I pass the throne to you? By then, the entire kingdom of God will be yours, of. Uh. Do you think I'm stupid? Tianchi said angrily, I am a free and easy prince, so I won't be fooled by you. You guys are not loyal enough. Can't you help your brother for two days? Do I have to be like my father in the next few thousand years? Alas, the god of thunder sighed. It's not impossible, just ask Jane and let her help you. Since Jane and Thor were not married yet, they naturally could not participate in the ceremony as queens, but could only participate as female companions. Even so, Jane still dressed up to attend today, trying hard to create a ladylike image, and wanted to give Thor some face. Hearing what Tianchi said, Jane's face turned red and she said angrily, Saul, don't listen to Tang's nonsense. The god of thunder had not yet turned around and asked in confusion, what nonsense? He asked you to help me, how can it be nonsense? Seeing Thor's brain, Queen Frigga put her hand on her forehead and sighed, when will this child grow up? Saul, Prince Tang wants you to have a child with Jane as soon as possible, so that the throne can be passed on, and you will be free. As a mother, no one wants to have a family full of children and grandchildren. Although Jane is not a perfect partner, she is a mortal, but who does Thor like her? Besides, Jane only has a lifespan of a hundred years. After a hundred years, she will just help Thor find an Asgardian to be his queen. Although Thor's motives were impure, the queen would still be happy to see him give birth to a son and a half daughters. Lei Shen's eyes lit up when he heard this. This is indeed a good idea. This guy Tang has such a flexible mind. When the child turns three years old and is able to sit on the throne, pass the throne to him and he will be free. Calculating it this way, it seems that it won't take many years. Maybe Tang will not come back from Xandar Star. So, the god of thunder turned his gaze to Jane, who saw Jane blushing like blood and said angrily, don't think so wildly. Thor said seriously, I think I can try it tonight. It's Asgard's business, Apocalypse comes back to Earth. Some things need to be prepared in advance. 
In addition to purchasing some items, Tianchi also bought two bouquets of flowers and visited two tombs. Although it is somewhat utilitarian, it is better than doing nothing. However, Apocalypse is not sure whether Star-Lord can accept it, and we will talk about it when we meet. After all preparations were completed, Apocalypse transferred to the Asgard Rainbow Control Room without stopping, and was directly transmitted to the Xandar Star Territory. Xandar Starfield, Meteor Belt, Klin Prison. Krillin Prison is a high-level prison in the Nova Empire. It was built in a chaotic meteor belt, far away from civilized planets, and is heavily guarded. It is impossible for ordinary people to escape from prison. Even if they can escape from prison, they cannot escape from the meteor belt. The meteor belt is full of meteorites with chaotic trajectories. There is only one hidden route for entry and exit. If they fly randomly, they will only crash the spacecraft alive. Today, Keelan Prison welcomes some special prisoners. Star-Lord, Gamora, Rocket the Raccoon, Groot the Tree Man. The four of them had just transferred from Shandar and were going to serve their sentences here. When he came in, what made Star-Lord unhappy was that his favorite cassette player was taken away by the prison guards. Originally this was nothing, but the prison guards still played with his beloved Walkman, and Star-Lord couldn't help it. He yelled at the prison guard and even wanted to fight back. But he forgot that he was shackled, so in the end there was nothing good to gain. He was shocked with a high-voltage electric baton, and his naked body was disinfected with a red liquid. Finally, he put on prison uniform and was rushed into the prison. The prison is a real prison. Upon entering, there is a lobby several stories high, with countless criminals of various alien races making a noise inside. Seeing Star-Lord and others coming in, many people shouted at Gamora, she is the daughter of Thanos, she is the executioner. Kill her, you are dead. Ha 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 ha. For many years, Thanos has pursued the theory of cosmic balance and considered himself benevolent. Everywhere he went, he killed half and left the other half. He formed life and death feuds with countless races in the universe. Almost every race here has been massacred by Thanos. As the adopted daughter of Thanos, Gamora had to participate in many actions. Naturally, many people from the massacred race also recognized her and hated her deeply. Tianchi stood on the third floor, watching all this quietly. Although the formula of the legend of the Dark Elf King is incomplete, after these days of exploration, Apocalypse has been able to slightly hide his figure by borrowing the energy of the ether particles, the reality gems. Everyone seems to be able to see Tianchi, but they have no impression of him. When they walk in front of him, they naturally walk around, as if they are looking at a pillar that has no sense of existence. The transfer from Xandar prison took longer than Tianchi thought. I spent two days preparing to return to Earth, and then took the Rainbow Bridge to Klin prison before Star-Lord and the others came in. A tall alien who looked like a hippopotamus wanted to challenge him. As a result, Groot, the tree man, poked a branch into his nostril, raised it high, and then threw it to the ground. The criminals around him fell silent. Obviously the person who was thrown just now was a bully in the prison. He couldn't even catch a move, and the others didn't have the courage to step forward for the time being. Raccoon Rocket took two steps forward and said, Open your eyes and see clearly who is the boss here. Ouch. Finally, it roared, revealing a total of four fangs, upper and lower. However, if it hadn't been for the establishment of prestige just now, these four fangs would have been much more cute than scary. Under the threat of the tree man's move, others did not dare to take action for the time being. Under the vicious eyes of others, Gamora temporarily entered her cell safely. She closed the cell door silently, ignoring the commotion outside. However, people outside are not in a hurry. Gamora will always come out during meals and havoc, and there will always be a chance to deal with her when the time comes. Tianchi noticed that a strong man with a naked upper body and strange red lines on his skin stared at Gamora coldly. If the guess is correct, this should be the one-minded destroyer who cannot understand the meaning behind the words and the, cut, gesture, Drax. Drax seemed to sense Apocalypse's gaze, and suddenly looked this way, and seemed a little confused when he saw Apocalypse. Apocalypse smiled slightly, Drax was known as the destroyer, and he was indeed unique. No one else saw him, but he was the only one who could distinguish the fake from the real and see the real. But Drax didn't think much about it. 
With his stubbornness, as long as it didn't concern him, he didn't bother to think about why this person was so strange. Star-Lord returned to his cell. He was bored and wanted to do something. He habitually touched the Walkman on his waist, and then he remembered that the prison guard had taken it away. Suddenly, there was a knock on the hard alloy door. Star-Lord said angrily, Go away, don't mess with me, let me be quiet for a while. But the, tuk tuk sound kept coming, and Tianchi's voice came from outside, Handsome guy, do you want to buy a tape? Star-Lord jumped up. In all his years in outer space, he has never heard anyone talk like this. These words can only be said by some dealers selling pirated tapes on the streets of Earth. When Star-Lord left the Earth relatively early, he used tapes to listen to music and videos to watch movies. Star-Lord opened the door and couldn't help but feel a little strange when he saw an Oriental man. The strange thing is not that he is an Oriental, but that this person looks too much like an Earthling. Over the years, Star-Lord has been wandering on alien planets and has seen many strange races, such as Groot the Tree Man, Rocket the Raccoon, etc. Although there are many alien races that are similar to humans, the differences can still be seen at a glance. For example, Gamora looks like an Earthling, but her skin is green. Like the man in front of him, there is no trace of alien features outside the Earth. This is the first time Star-Lord has encountered him. Who are you? Star-Lord asked warily. Tianchi smiled and said, I sell tapes. Do you want to listen to the music or watch the video? Tianchi took out several boxes of tapes, including large ones for video recorders and small audio tapes for listening to songs. Star-Lord hesitated for a moment, decided to see what trick the man in front of him was playing, and said, listen to the song. Okay, I have two boxes here. One is the second volume of, Golden Songs, and the other is the album of the band Redbone. Which one do you want? Star-Lord immediately took two steps back, his eyes filled with disbelief. The cassette, Golden Songs, was the only cassette he brought from Earth, and he listened to it countless times. He listened to these songs every time he felt lonely among these alien races, and it gave him some sense of belonging. Golden Songs, is a collection, divided into two boxes. Star-Lord only brought the first volume. He has always missed how he wanted to buy the first volume when he was a child and put together a set. However, my mother was ill at that time and the family had no money left. Until he came to the alien planet, he didn't buy it. He always felt that this was a regret in his life. As for, Redbone Band Album, it was created by the singer of his favorite song, Come and Get Your Love. This song is very magical and has a strong rhythm. It is comparable to the Chinese Ant Square Dance Song. People who listen to it always dance involuntarily, and even get knocked unconscious without knowing it. Love the House and the Bird, Star-Lord naturally also wants to hear other songs by the Redbone Band. Am I dreaming? How come such a good thing comes to your door? Star-Lord couldn't believe it and patted his face. Oops, it hurts. It's not a dream. Who are you? Star-Lord asked again. I told you, it's a tape seller. Do you want it? Don't want me to ask the next one. Seeing that Apocalypse was about to leave, Xing Lord couldn't help it. Even if there was a pit, he had to step on it, otherwise he would regret it for the rest of his life if he missed it. I want, I want Redbone's album. It is good. Apocalypse put the tape into an old-fashioned Walkman and a pair of headphones from Earth, handed them to Star-Lord, and said, buy the tape and get the Walkman, you try it first. Star-Lord took the earphones dubiously, and the familiar singing voice immediately reached his ears, and he almost burst into tears on the spot. Hey, hey, what's the matter with your head? Yeah, hey, hey, what's the matter with your mind and your sign? After listening to a song, Star-Lord tried to suppress his emotions and pretended to be indifferent, what do you want? You also know that I have no money now. At this time, there was a noise in the distance, and in the middle there was the sound of Gamora fighting but it was soon drowned out by more male voices. If there is no deviation, Apocalypse guesses that it is an alien race that was massacred by Thanos at this time, and wants to drag Gamora into the bathroom to take revenge. As for why the bathroom? It's because the blood stains here are easier to clean. After cleaning up afterward, the prison guards might not be able to find a single person missing, or in other words, as long as they look good on the surface, they don't care at all. Tianchi said, We'll discuss the reward later. Let's take a look at the girl who came with you first. 
Star Lord said anxiously. She is the only one who knows who is willing to buy the cosmic spirit ball. We cannot let her die. The two of them ran towards the sound. When the two arrived, they found that Drax the Destroyer had led a group of people to besiege Gamora. Although Gamora is very strong, it is difficult for her to defeat more than a dozen hands with her hands. If she is outside, she can also reduce the attacks of many people in front of her by fighting around, but now the prison space is small and escape is unavoidable. In addition, the destroyer's reputation was not in vain. After a few rounds, Drax held a simple dagger to his throat. Drax said, Thanos sent Ronan to kill my people, as well as my wife and children. Today, I will kill his relatives to avenge him. Gamora hurriedly said, I am not a family member of Thanos and Ronan, and I want to kill them too. Lie, many of our races have seen you fight for Thanos. I was forced, half of my people were killed by Thanos. I was kidnapped by him since I was a child and trained as a killer. I couldn't resist at all. Although Gamora tried her best to defend herself, Drax couldn't let her go with just a few words from Gamora because of the genocide. The dagger in his hand was about to stab forward when Star-Lord and Apocalypse arrived. Apocalypse was far away, and a yellow divine power was wrapped around the dagger, as if it was pressed against his throat, and he could no longer move forward. Star-Lord hurriedly said, She has betrayed Thanos and Ronan, and Ronan will definitely come to hunt him down. Didn't Ronan kill your wife and children? We can use her as bait, and then. As he spoke, Star-Lord made a motion of wiping his neck. Sure enough, Drax didn't understand what this gesture meant at all, and wondered, why did I put my finger on Ronan's throat? Star-Lord was stunned. This was the first time he met someone who couldn't understand this gesture, so he had to say, it's not about putting your finger on his throat, it's about cutting his throat, killing him, killing Ronan. Drax said, I can't kill him with my fingers, I can use a knife. Ah, well, that's the same thing anyway. No, there are two different meanings. You use your fingers, and I want to use a knife. Yes, yes, it means two things. Can we put her down first? The enemy of our enemy is our friend. She can help us kill Ronan. Do you have anything to say? Friend, Drax suddenly said to Tianchi. Drax obviously knew that the divine power that blocked the dagger was inspired by Tianchi. Out of respect for the strong, he naturally wanted to ask Tianchi what he meant. The alien criminal standing next to Apocalypse was startled. If Drax hadn't shouted, he wouldn't have noticed that there was someone standing so close. Tianchi said, what she said is true. And it's worse than what you heard. Not only were her people massacred, Thanos also forced her and her sister to kill each other. Whoever loses will take part of their body and use machinery to substitution. Gamora was shocked. Very few people knew about these things. Even Ronan didn't know. How did the man in front of her know? It can be said that Gamora and Nebula are truly in love with each other. The reason for killing each other is because of Thanos' oppression. In order to survive, they had to fight against each other with all their strength, although Nebula never won once. Gradually, the two really started to resent each other, especially Xingyun. Every time he loses, he not only hates Thanos, but also hates Gamora. Why does he never let himself go? He treats her as a sister, but has she ever treated him as a sister? As for falling in love, probably because the two of them have been by Thanos' side since childhood, they only have each other to cherish. Although they fight and kill each other every day, at critical moments, when either party is in trouble, they are never ruthless enough to kill them. Hearing what Apocalypse said, Drax removed the dagger from Gamora's throat. Everyone looked at Gamora with pity, but they did not expect that she, like her own race, was a victim of Thanos. Only Star-Lord looked at Gamora humbly and muttered, can't you see where it's fake? Finally, he stopped in front of Gamora's chest and curled his lips and said, no wonder it's so flat. Gamora was so angry that she ran away on the spot, flashed her slender legs, and kicked Star-Lord directly in the face. Ha 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 ha, Star-Lord hurriedly defended, clapped his hands lightly, and opened his long legs, girl, I'm here to save you. Then I thank you and your whole family. Gamora gritted her teeth and kept attacking, kicking out an afterimage with her long legs. Gamora has a slender figure. Just standing, she is no shorter than Star-Lord. If you include high heels, she is half a head taller than Star-Lord. Her long leg attacks are particularly powerful. 
They were besieged by many alien criminals just now, and the prison space was too small to maneuver, so they were easily subdued. Fortunately, Star-Lord is no ordinary person. He has been able to survive after being a star thief for so many years. It's really hard to do without some skills. Under the shadow of his legs, Star-Lord was dodging left and right, seemingly embarrassed, but Gamora was unable to do anything to him for a moment. At this time, the Tree Man Groot and the Raccoon Rocket rushed over and saw Star-Lord and Gamora fighting. They were a little confused. Why were they fighting? Star-Lord shouted, Is it over yet? Do you still want to sell things? Seeing the talkative talk of the people around her, Gamora snorted before stopping her attack. The four people avoided the others and discussed countermeasures. Seeing Apocalypse following, Star-Lord, Gamora, Raccoon Rocket, and Treeman Groot all looked at him warily. Tianchi shrugged and said, I know you want to sell the Cosmic Spirit Ball, and I am the buyer. You can consider selling it to me. Everyone was shocked. No one else knew about the Cosmic Spirit Ball except them. Even the Xandarians who captured them didn't know that the Cosmic Spirit Ball was in their hands, and just thought they were caught by mistake. The Cosmic Spirit Ball, which was ignored by the Xandarians, is still treated as an ordinary item and stored in the prison's storage locker. Gamora raised her eyebrows and said, can you afford the price? Another buyer offered 40 billion star coins. Hiss, I'm Groot, Star-Lord, Rocket the Raccoon, and Groot the Tree Man gasped. The price was beyond their imagination. Star coins are the common currency of the Nova Empire, and their purchasing power is astonishing. Even an interstellar thief like Star-Lord only has a reward of four star coins. Before going to prison, the reason Rocket fought with Star-Lord was because he found out that Star-Lord's bounty was four star coins, and shouted on the spot, I'm going to be rich. Then they had a scuffle with each other, and then Xandar took advantage and caught the four of them with the binding light. One can imagine how much money 40 billion is. Star-Lord asked hurriedly, who is that buyer? Collector, Tanya Tiwan. No wonder, he is the only one who can pay such a high price. The Collector Tiwan is famous among the stars. He owns the famous Tiwan Group, which is the group that developed the Land of Nothingness, the God's Head. Moreover, he likes to collect all kinds of rare and strange items in the universe, including many rare intelligent life forms. His identity is also very strange. In the original plot, after Asgard re-obtained the Aether Particles from the Dark Elves, he was afraid that it would be too dangerous to put them together with the Cosmic Cube. Just send Sif and Volstag to escort the Aether Particles and store them in Tivan's hands. It stands to reason that Asgard can safely hand over something as precious and dangerous as Aether Particles to a foreigner, which is very intriguing in itself. Tianchi smiled and said, I don't have so much money, and I don't plan to give any money. Star-Lord and the other four looked startled, and slowly approached, looking at Apocalypse warily. Seeing this, Tianchi didn't say much. If he didn't show his strength, no one would listen to him. So, they pressed forward with one hand, and the four Star Lords suddenly felt a surge of energy, and their whole bodies froze instantly, unable to move. Star Lord, Gamora, and Rocket the Raccoon all blushed, and they couldn't free themselves at all. The branches on Groot's body continued to grow, but they couldn't move any further into the void, as if they were hitting an invisible wall, and the branches were squeezed flat in the void. Seeing that it was almost done, Tianchi closed his hand. The invisible pressure disappeared instantly, and Star-Lord, Gamora, Rocket and the other three people suddenly took a deep breath. The suppression just now made it difficult to even breathe. Tianchi said calmly, The cosmic spirit ball is now in the prison locker. If I want to rob it, there is no need to discuss it with you. Star-Lord said, Since you are not willing to rob it, what are you going to use to buy it? How about I trade you two song tapes for your share? Star-Lord struggled for a moment. The tape meant far more to him than ordinary money. But when money reaches a certain amount, this meaning seems to be something that can be put aside temporarily. With 10 billion star coins, I can put my thoughts about my hometown aside for now. Since the mysterious man in front of me is powerful but not robbing him, he probably won't use two tapes to buy or sell by force. So, Star-Lord said, no, I can buy the tape with star coins. I'm not going to trade the tape for star coins, but that's not the point. Tianchi knew that it was impossible to exchange two boxes of tapes for a quarter of the share, 
So he continued, what if we add a bouquet of flowers? Star Lord asked curiously, what kind of flower? Gamora, Rocket and others looked at the negotiation between the two people in confusion. Although they know that Star Lord likes listening to music, they want to exchange two song tapes for 10 billion star coins. How is this possible? Don't even think about it. However, Star Lord hesitated for a while before finally refusing, which made Gamora curious. What kind of song is this? Such magic. You actually need to weigh it in front of 10 billion star coins. You must listen to it if you have the opportunity in the future. As for the bouquet of flowers mentioned later, Gamora and Rocket were also as confused as Star Lord. What flower dares to compare with 10 billion star coins? Apocalypse pressed the watch on his wrist and projected a holographic image in the air. The image is of a cemetery with luxuriant green grass. Looking around, it is surrounded by dense white stone monuments. The camera zooms in on a tombstone and sees the words above. Meredith Quayle, 1952-1988. Then, Tianchi, wearing a black formal suit, holding a white bouquet in his hand, slowly approached and said to the tombstone. Ms. Meredith, although we have never met, I am here today to give you a bouquet of flowers on behalf of your son. I also want to tell you some good news. Your son Quill is now an adult. He is healthy and capable. You don't have to worry. I hope you can receive this news in heaven. Then, Tianchi stepped forward and presented flowers. Video ends. These are some of the preparations Apocalypse has made on Earth. Although they are somewhat utilitarian, they must be tried. After the movie ended, Star-Lord's eyes immediately became warm and filled with tears, and he tried hard not to cry. Are you really from Earth? Real, how is the Earth now? It's almost the same as when you left. Even though technology has improved a bit, people are still the same as before. There were some bad guys who wanted to cause trouble, but I beat them away. Star-Lord took a few deep breaths to calm down his mood, and finally couldn't help but stepped forward and gave Apocalypse a solid hug. Thank you for the flowers you gave my mother. Really, even though I know you have other intentions, I still thank you very much. Tianchi was helpless. He traveled to this world and was hugged by men more often than by women. He didn't know where the opening method was wrong. Unexpectedly, a ding sound came from the system at this time, indicating that Star-Lord's trust level was 20% and his luck sharing was 20%. Apocalypse was a little strange. He originally thought that Star-Lord would be a very guarded person after growing up among the Star Thieves, but he didn't expect to gain his trust so easily. It seemed that his mother's weight in his heart was heavier than imagined. No wonder the God Ego later said that he was responsible for causing Star-Lord's mother to get cancer. Star-Lord did not hesitate and was about to turn against her and fight with her on the spot. Immortality and domination of the universe are not as important as my mother's life. But, it's still not enough. Star-Lord let go of Tianchi and said. What if there is news about your father? What? Star-Lord was completely shocked. Since he was a child, his mother has described his father as a light, but he has never seen him, not even a photo of him. As a child of a single-parent family, I long for the day when my father comes back day and night. Now that he has grown up, Star-Lord is increasingly worried that his father has died of old age and may never be able to see him again in this life. Who is my father? Is he still alive? Don't worry, he is still alive, and his lifespan will probably exceed your imagination. Star-Lord's father is the god Ego, a natural brain born at the beginning of the universe, which eventually evolved into a planet. If he hadn't caused the death himself, theoretically his lifespan would have been immortal. Seeing that Apocalypse did not continue, Star-Lord couldn't wait to say, Deal. I'll give you my share. Tell me quickly, who is my father? Where is he? His name is Yi Zhe. Don't worry, you will meet soon. Then you can ask him in person if you have anything to say. This sentence immediately plunged Star-Lord into deep thought. If you really see your father, how should you face him? Punch him directly and ask him why he abandoned his mother. Or ask him if he has any difficulties, why he has never come back to see his mother and son after so many years. Apocalypse looked at Raccoon Rocket. The original body of Raccoon Rocket was a lower animal. It was transformed by some great scientist. Not only did he become super intelligent, he also became a weapons expert. Later, when I arrived on Earth, I met Iron Man and laughed at Iron Man, 
saying that he may be the smartest person on earth, but he is far from being ranked among the best in the universe. However, this transformation does not come without a cost. First, the lifespan of the main body has not changed. The lifespan of a raccoon is still only more than 10 years. Second, the transformation process was extremely painful, and there are still densely packed steel nails on the back of the rocket. Even the pain still exists now, but he doesn't talk about it. Coupled with the fact that his lifespan is only a few years, he naturally doesn't care about politeness, so raccoons can be so fiery and impatient when talking and doing things. Raccoon Rocket looked disdainful. I'm not a coward like Star-Lord. I don't have parents, so don't try to impress me with family ties. I have a potion that can completely transform any species into another species. In other words, if you want to shed this raccoon body and become any race, including becoming a tree man, you can. Of course, if if you want to become a high-level being like a god, you probably won't be able to. What Tianchi was talking about was the purple recovery potion, which the system called the body shaping potion. This kind of medicine requires saving millions of people to generate one dose, so it is extremely precious. Originally, only one dose was generated during the New York Wormhole War. Later, after the Dark Elf King fought and saved the Nine Realms, many more were created. The Purple Recovery Potion not only has all the functions of the Ordinary Potion and the Golden Potion. It can also completely change a person's body structure, whether it is used to change gender, change species, or improve physical qualifications. You only need to follow the ideas in your mind before taking it, and you can achieve it. Ouch, Rocket showed four fangs and roared, you lie. There is no way such a potion exists in the universe. Tianchi smiled and said, yes, I lied to you. Do you want to spend money to buy a lesson? It will increase your IQ. Ouch, ow. Raccoon Rocket was so angry that he scratched his face with both hands, looking like an angry pet bear. Now that people have made it clear that this is a scam, it is a naked provocation, as if they are just waiting for me, a fool, to jump into it. This makes the Rockets very unhappy. If he wasn't in prison now, and the Hadron Cannon he usually had handy wasn't around, he would have blasted him with a cannon. But the Rocket itself doesn't have a few years left to live. He is not so eager for money, but he is obsessed with lifespan and this body. Whether this trap is real or fake, we still need to step on it. Ah, deal. Rocket showed his fangs and said, if you dare to lie to me, I will definitely find your home planet and blast it into cosmic dust with one shot. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.